And here we go. Welcome to Hot Takes, everybody. It is I, Vaporwave DJ Young Shiro, joined by my colleague, Skeleton Lipstick. Say hello, Skelly. Hello. hello. Very excited to be here tonight to share this lovely, exciting evening with our dear friend, Frank Javc. And actually, I need to fix that text. Mm -hmm. I've just realized. Uh, I will fix it. Um, to all of you tuned in, thank you. If you're a regular, awesome. I'm super glad to see you. If you're a new chatter, uh, attendee, thank you so much for being here. Um, Hot Takes is a vaporwave talk show. Not quite a podcast, uh, not quite a uh, interview show, but maybe kind of a little bit of a hodgepodge of the both with heavy audience involvement. So if you're if you're new to Hot Takes, fill that chat up with questions because it's going to be a very exciting interactive evening with vaporwave comedian, DJ, and producer and internet personality Frank Javsey. Um, just a couple ground rules. Please, no punching down. Punching up is fine. You can shit talk Kanye West, Elon Musk, whoever you want. But please don't shit talk each other. Um, also, if you uh, if you have a question, your questions will be pinned. And we will get to them as quickly as we can. Additionally, if you uh, put it, as you might have noticed, if you put emotes in the chat, they'll show up on the screen. So fill that screen up with emotes, guys. Um, if you hit uh, exclamation point Skelly, you get uh, Skelly socials and you can follow the uh, the good doctor. If oh. you put exclamation point Shiro, you can follow me on my socials. If you hit exclamation point donate, you can donate, which is optional, very much appreciated because all donations go towards commissioning our friends and equipment upgrades for the show. Um, keep us in the know about levels. If it's too loud, if it's too quiet, please let us know. And of course, have fun. We're going to start the evening out with some uh, recommendations, courtesy of Skeleton Lipstick. Yes, hi guys. Thank you for joining me. And just full disclosure, I'm feeling very under the weather right now. I'm a little bit sick, so please bear with me if I'm a bit peaked tonight. I apologize, but uh, a little bit under the weather. So I'm sluggish, that's the reason. Um, so recommendations, what I want to recommend tonight are um, two tapes from Virtual 94 that I really, really enjoy a lot. And I, I'm going to say are maybe two of my favorite, actually definitely two of my favorite releases of the year. And they're actually both by uh, artist um, named uh, Geo Metro. Nice. And, uh, yes. And Geo Metro, if you're not familiar with him, he is a Philadelphia based uh, vaporwave experimental breakbeat producer um he is a very fascinating person right now he's actually actually he's not in philadelphia right now he's often like his own personal farm that he's living at right now and just completely, like he is like too cool like, the the most like rugged yet intellectual gentleman yet and kind and like compassionate you know gentleman like i have like, ever met he's almost like a bit of a uh like a, 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 a bit of a, a spiritual maestro, if you will, and it's definitely been like a, a Damn, source of a, 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 a yeah, best been like been like a spiritual advisor at times for hundred percent myself. Came from DDS, I know B Font, Fiverr, the Virtual Ninety Four guys, all kinds of other people who we, we who has like this man has like been a big influence on, you know. And he's got two of these tapes out right now. They're under different names. They're actually not oh. under. Geometro. Uh, the first one is under the name uh, Mad Gear. Let me see if this comes up. Mad Gear. Up oh, that's a there. wild looking cover. That's a Machine Girl ass yeah. cover. Yeah, this is Mad Gear. And this album is a little EP. It's a little bit shorter. It's called uh, No Life Choice. And this one is a bit more aggressive, a bit more breakbeat. Uh, it's really, really, really fun. And <laughs> it's really, really fun. And I'm going to talk about this one along with along with the other tapes. So let me just show you the other tape right now. This is uh, this is under the name Bonneville right now. Mm. I'm going to put these links for these albums in the uh, in the uh, and it's funny. So you, with the uh, the Bugs Bunny cartoon uh, holding the gun tape, this one is called. Oh damn! Um, is that what that is? Bonneville never broke again. And I remember even talking to him about it. And be like, you know, it's really interesting. You <laughs> have I mean, that's a really fun repurposing that sort of Looney Tunes gangster yeah. 
like yeah. uh like uh like uh you know imagery and he's like oh i have a long story about that and then he goes on to tell me about like his day jobs like working when he was like you know uh, in his younger days working with like the mexican immigrants who actually designed these things yeah like, he, would be with them. he would be with them when that they were when they were uh, doing the, border, the uh though. doing the uh the the what's it you know like the airbrushing style, like airbrushing yeah, like, yeah like all there's like all whole like like crazy background that goes to even why this sort of thing was chosen so like these albums are infused with so much strange energy and uh and, and interesting kind of music? confidence and so this one the bonneville one yeah. is a little bit more vapor wave-ish than the mad okay. Gear one which is a little bit more breaky ish but both of them really play a lot with text with i hate using the word textures i think we overuse it sometimes but they really do these are some very interesting textures that are being put forward on these tapes this man it really knows how to produce interesting sounding things that i i don't really think i've heard before and the bonneville one is definitely vaporwave but it's being stretched to accompany all kinds of different rhythms and sound textures that uh, kind of weave together to create a really really wonderful experience um, let me see here there's one I know there's like one on this Bonneville is it, yeah that's uh, uh, Stand Your Ground which I believe is like sampling which sounds like it must be sampling hate for you Honestly, Damn! It's crazy. Yeah, it's That's crazy. pretty wild, bro. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a I really, fucking love Vaporwave, really dude. <laughs> fun album. This is a really interesting, unique. These are both really interesting, unique albums, and I really think that you should just buy both of them. Uh, they definitely fit Shit, together yeah. well. They complement each other, but uh, but they're both different enough to feel like okay, I understand why he used two separate uh, monikers for both of these. But anyway, they're both by. Uh, Geo Metro, but under the name Mad Gear and Bonneville, and I really highly recommend them. They're very fun, and he's a very fascinating individual in general. I would love to meet him. I love it when artists yeah. are multifaceted like that. You know what? It's really you know you know he's a very he's a very fascinating person. So yeah, I would say it sounds check like him out. it. Put the links in, I'll put the links in here. All right, please do. Have you got a third for us, or or is that? Um, that's good. <laughs> All right. Well, hey guys, definitely check out these links that Skelly posted. I'm a huge breaks fan, especially break core. So anything that's made by an artist that's not uh problematic, that's great. Uh, definitely down to check that yes. out. You know, uh, you all know about break core. <laughs> um, yeah. so I want to talk about speaking of um problematic people. I want to talk a little bit about canceling people. <clears throat> and um and just i guess maybe maybe grace with people it's a tough subject to bring up right because all of us want to keep our our venues and our our spaces and our discord servers clean and and comfortable and and inviting and safe right which is crucial especially for our friends that are that are lgbtq our friends that are uh, you know, minorities or just people that are that are underserved uh, members of the population. We want to we want to protect and celebrate those voices. But I just want to ask if we are working towards creating a more perfect society, whereupon we are more likely to call out uh, and 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 be honest with and 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 exhort our our brothers and sisters and our our, our non-binary friends as well. Uh, towards better behavior how successful of course in certain exceptions like fucking nazism right or white supremacy how successful has it ever been when somebody made you feel like less less than human for for a mistake that you made in your youth perhaps or or just maybe some naive or ignorant behavior that you have moved on from anyways this is getting long-winded i guess my hot take for today i don't know about all of you guys in chat skelly or frank but i know that unfortunately i've had a pretty edgy history there have been times in my past that i've said things that i would very much like to forget and i would hope that the internet and all of society would have forgotten and it just bothers me when i see people who have said some things that were hurtful years ago right or even recently and have have made an effort to be better to better themselves and to be kind to other people around them but yet they still are getting ostracized and called out and and just you know sent to our sjw gulag when that doesn't i don't feel like move people to be better 
anyways, I want to see what you think about that, Chris, and also Frank, when we bring our lovely guest on. But I feel like the way to get through to people is to encourage them and empathize with them, and but, but of course be real with them. And I feel like angrily canceling people is literally just going to send them further in the opposite direction and create even worse behavior. And again, I want to create that little exception, that little star after that statement. Of course, with things like Nazism and white supremacy, fuck those guys. But what do you think, man? I mean... Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everybody has to learn. Everybody's going to make a mistake. Um, it's honestly up to the person that it's happening to to sort of manage it, too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you are getting called out for something, you know, what you should probably do is be, yes, I did that. I learned my lesson. Yeah. That's that. You know, you got to take control of the situation if that's the way it's going. You know what I mean? People are always going to do that to you, and it's up to you to control the energy, in my opinion. You know, some people agree. They have something. That, like this that happens to them and they run for cover and they start panicking and they freak out and then they start over apologizing and uh nah, no, don't do that control the energy control yourself ease it yourself just you know be better mean? and yeah do better no yeah, yeah you'll, you will just no you, you know don't even just don't even say like you know just be like yeah i know i'm, I'm do I, I do better now yeah and that's that you know you you put yeah. the thing to rest and you and- if someone, if someone comes at you with, with big emotion, you come at them with calmness. That's how it works. I think that is very important, and I I'm, I'm, I love that. I agree. It is on. It is the onus of the person who's being called out to to listen, apologize, and amend their behavior. But I, I also think there's an onus on us to to encourage those people and give positive reinforcement and be gracious and patient with yeah. them. Sure, because I mean, sure. this yes. might be a little corny, but I heard I heard an anecdote about an African village. And I don't know how true this is, where when somebody like fucks up, rather than like you know beating them to a pulp or whatever, they just stand around them and they cry and they they say good things about like what makes that person a good person and and how they believe in and trust in them to be better. I don't know if that's yeah, true at all, but like I really want to think it is, and I really feel like we should be nice. more like that. It does sound a little bit too would would, would be very perfect. nice and hope it is. Um, but you know, and yeah. and we're we're here to have a good, lighthearted, fun time. And I'm gonna go ahead if you're cool with it and bring on our our delightful guest this evening. Please bring and maybe on. Maybe we can Frank. maybe we can talk about this heavy subject matter uh, from somebody who may have something to say about that, and we, we can move on to to uh the content that we are bringing to you guys tonight uh frank go ahead and unmute yourself buddy and everybody say everybody give a warm welcome Uh, to our very good friend where's the static damn it hey there you go welcome to the show frank jaffsey hello everyone hello i'd like to give a shout out to alice draw bass jammy casper town comma trudge commander root drop snap fellow fungus Fiber Music, mm-hmm. Frank Jeff C, Momo3609, Patchwork Notes, uh, no, Patch Notes, there we go, Roxy, Surf, oh wait, Short Stuff 888, Southwest underscore Streamlabs, Torch2424, and Zavi Mac. Thank you for being here Damn. with us in this moment. Impressive. Yeah. Um. Now I will collapse the chat. <laughs> How is everyone? Mm-hmm. So what are we talking about? We're talking about cancel culture. I think yeah. it's interesting because um, isn't it weird to think like I was thinking about middle school like the whole time you're okay. talking like things that we said in the 2000s simply cannot fly today because we are mm-hmm. so connected as a society. Literally all our brains yeah. are connected. It was super surreal to me. I remember one time I was in a group chat. I would just hang out with people and I was like, wait a second. Had this not existed, we would never know each other. Had the vaporwave scene never existed, we wouldn't know each other. We wouldn't know how to talk to each other. But now... In an instant, I could talk to anyone all over the world. Like, look at us. How far yeah. are we from each other? Quite this far. Was I'm on the other Literally coast. coasts apart. Yeah. yeah, so society is evolving with each other. Like, I know for a fact there's a pendulum. Because I know in, like, 2016, it was, like, the edgy period. Then right. we went back to the middle. And then we, we, we just kind of go back and forth. And, like, we're... Yeah. Like, I'm really into evolution. Like, all we are is evolving to be efficient. That's what I, I think we're looking for is efficiency and simplicity. So when mm. things go against that norm, like what you were talking about earlier is um, why do people get canceled? And it's because yeah. they hurt people. And like, like straight up, that's all it is. Like, 
hurting You're people right. both physically, mentally, uh, emotionally, spiritually, and like sometimes it can be kind of weird. Like I don't know if you've ever heard my song "I Love Hating You," but that song yes. has double mixed meanings. One of the meaning is a mass culture meaning, where I realize people would rather talk about what they hate than they love. So I kind of yeah. subverted that and said like, "Hey." I love hating you. Like that's the vibe that I was getting around those times, especially during quarantine times. Like all my feed was filled with just people talking about what they hated. And like, I was like, well, what do you guys love? <laughs> I Good guess they just point. love hating. Like, Why all the negativity, right? Yeah. yeah. A wiser um, person just... than myself once said that nothing brings people together quite like hating the same things. Yeah, that shit I can't fuck with. And like you were talking about Nazism. What the fuck is that all about? It's just like we hate people that don't look like us. And like I I could not <laughs> fuck with that. Is like, what it is. If I saw someone that like people that are di like that's what makes the world go round is the synthesize synthesizing of different cultures. Like Vaporwave yeah. is at its fundamental root. Like this, we were talking about this earlier. I was like, I think it's a mass trauma. I also think it's a yeah. Cult. I you remember did you say saying that. that and being like, I was much would be a bonded by trauma. Like, That's oh, such wow. a good metaphor. That's so interesting. Or, or I don't yeah. know if it's a metaphor, but it's a good like theory. I kind of agree yeah. with you. Because we are all regressing to like the past where we were both young, naive. We had idealized views of what the future would be like. Like I remember right. specifically being like. Um, like I grew up mostly during the Y2K thing because I was born in 92, yeah. so I didn't gain consciousness until like 95, and I was like, what the fuck? I'm alive. <laughs> okay. No shit, right? <laughs> I don't remember yeah. being two years old. Yeah, so like um, PlayStation aesthetic, um, 90s house music, like the, the funky colors, Will Smith mm -hmm. stuff, like that sort of yeah. like uh, preference. That vibe is like what I... One of the things that I remember, I was talking to Vape because like, I was like one of the first people to like really just talk about Vaporwave. Like I remember when I started talking yeah. about it, it was like 2013, 14, no one really like discussed uh, hauntology. Like, do you know what hauntology is? Like all yes, cultures yeah. have a sort of hauntology where they like uh, bring up the past and kind of idolize it and glorify it beyond it's like uh, what it actually was like. So like it was it was popular in like Russia like during the uh, Cold War. Like, oh like, man, some of those old War cartoons are so creepy. I think that's yeah. what you're referring to. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for, I love energy. That's one of the big things. Like, you know what's weird? The only reason we're alive is because of energy. And then we run out of energy, we're just boop. Um, <laughs> Bruh, good point. What are you talking about? Give me, I, I'm very ADHD and just, you know. You were talking about, you were one of the first people to start thinking about, talking about Vaporwave. Oh yeah, in so. Public, in a public and, internet forum. And because of that, like, it was kind of controversial because have I ever told you my Vaporwave story, why I made How To Vaporwave? Because I had a really pretentious... No, I was going to no, be I one really of my questions. Hear it. <laughs> that was okay. going to be one of my questions. Let's get to it. So it, I was in college. I was um, on Tumblr. I was making remixes. I was just doing all types of music. My fundamental root was 8-bit. I would make 8-bit remixes out, of Chase, pop songs. Thank you. And um, would did Chase say something? I'm sorry just to interrupt you. Chase just donated $15. Thank you, Chase. That's crazy. Anyways, Chase. Yeah, Ballin. shout out, Chase. Hey, you go. were doing 8-bit remixes of pop songs. Yeah, and so I was on like Tumblr, and you know the Tumblr days was so wild west. Like you would meet so many people, oh, bro, things would I... go viral. Yeah, yeah. So I I used to live with these people. Um, I I still kind of keep up with one of them because I I used to have like really strong feelings for them. So like we still like every once a year, it's like, what are you doing? And then they even went to my show in New York really? when I opened That's up for so Young cool. Babe. That was like the oh, worst wow. show I had that ever was performed. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> it was really bad. People oh, no. were booing me, telling me to get off the stage. What? In front of 800 people. Are you yeah. serious? That's yeah. so terrible. Yeah. After Why? I got off, I, I like went to the I went to the back rooms and I just started crying. I would oh, have to. No. I'd have been hey, fucking mortified. So terrible. Afterwards, young Bay didn't even say anything to me. He was like, "Well, that was awkward." Oh no. Um, Top anyways, five Young Bay um, moments. Vape vapor wave. Um, yeah. the the first I had these roommates and one of them was like, I guess he, well they uh didn't like me because you know i me and their i guess situationship they were like you know closer than me and them and yeah. so they used to just be like uh you don't know anything about music do you even listen to vaporwave and i was like yeah i've heard it and they had like a whole flash drive and they gave me a flash drive with every single vapor release ever to that point and i think like they back in the up. early days people were really into archiving it people it was, were like, doing that entirely... people really yeah there was i remember like going oh yeah was, like, thing, like the really little passionate. small folders with everything yeah so i i got that and i was listening to it and i like and like you could still do that back then yeah 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 a lot of it 
to me was um like the production quality was kind of like just like mid to me because i was like at that point i was listening to like purity ring or like trap or skrillex yeah, you know i so, do remember that I got, the, I got the idea of it i've never this is something i always talk about with the music i think vaporwave music is just okay i love the visual and world building aspect of it that's where that oh yeah that, 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 been, that you have been saying that for years that's the yeah. world building is your favorite part of it you've been saying that for years I've, I've, you said so, i remember the first time you said that a while ago. it is very evocative isn't it yeah yeah. So then um, my roommate, who was like really pretentious and mean towards me, like one of the things that I didn't like about it was there was like an economical kind of situation because I had to drop out of college. I had to go move back in with my parents. And one of the things was like they came from like a different class than me. And I didn't like that whole like class aspect of it because they um, they would like make fun of me for being poor and shit and not being able to afford rent. So like <laughs> because of that, I always had like this weird like kind of just like, ow. And that's why I also kind of stressed the capitalism within my videos where I like talked it like I was trying to like make fun of like the rich and like the idea of like uh refurbishing someone's art to just like uh, get profit out of it and that sort of stuff well you and know i one fuck of with that is why i wanted to talk about i think in the vaporwave scene if you there's like a spectrum if you're to like make it like a duality thing there's people that are artists for art's sake and people that are artists for monetary sake and i think in the vaporwave yeah, scene it's point. very fluid as who's using it for art's sake or are they using it for monetary gain and so I made that video to make fun of uh, my pretentious roommate who was just like really mean towards me. <laughs> so like they, they like vaporwave and I was like, I'm just gonna make fun of them. And then I didn't know it was gonna blow the fuck up. Oops. <laughs> and that you were gonna happened. get super into vaporwave. Yeah, like the whole thing was like, it was just like a joke. Cause I didn't think vaporwave was gonna be that. I thought it was like a, a, a little meme, a flash in the pan. I didn't think it was gonna be like a generational art movement. Yeah, yeah. No, Z Punk is a part of it. Z Punk yeah. definitely is a branch of vaporwave, and like you have all these other stuff, like um, what's it called, like the Utopia stuff. I'm really into the Utopia yeah. stuff. I like the idea of like the the you like the MIDI stuff. Yeah, I love uh like MIDI um just Me like too. you know what it is millennial like uh new age music. That's what I've always thought of yeah. it. Yeah, millennial new That's age really music well that has said. like a a tinge of like um we were talking about like hauntology and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Anyways, I did this video. Um, it was my first ever viral video because, like, I was making like a bunch of YouTube. I've been on YouTube since 2008, so six, um, six years after just starting, it was the first video to get like 100k views in a month. And I was like, what the uh, fuck? unreal. <laughs> and that's what it, it was like back in those days. Those numbers were crazy. Like, mm -hmm. I was uploading like around that the was. time when like. Yeah. And you know what's funny? That's how I met like a bunch of people because I used a picture of Anthony Fantano. He saw it and he's like, oh, they no an image of me. I'm going to follow that guy. And as soon as he yeah, follows me, he's like, you want to collab? <laughs> so we did a collab Thank in a you, day. Robert Smith. Well, Shout yeah, you did, yeah. Um, you did a song on the uh, the What's It Called album, right? The uh, What's the, the what's his alter ego again? Who? Uh, Cal Chujeska. Cal yeah. Chujeska. Yeah, you did, you did a song, you did a, uh, a song of that. You did? And I remember you even made a beat, too. It's been yeah, so you, long. I remember yeah. even reading, like, a review of that album and, like, the person reviewing it, like, trash. Every single track, like, one by one on it, except for yours. He's like, well, this Frank guy made a good beat. Oh, thank you. Frank does make good beats. Um, I try. I've been, like, the thing is, like, I just like music in general. My biggest issue with not, like, kind of picking a niche is I feel like I'm genreless. So I make, like, pop, I make rock, I make rap. I was kind of thinking about you earlier when I complimented multifaceted producers. You're you're right in that category. Thank you. Because yeah. it comes from a, just um, a musical Where background. I play from? everything. Like, I've where, yeah. where did music start for, When did music start for you? When did you start getting into music? When did you start um, when you like playing I was it? a toddler, and um, mm -hmm. my uncle, he used to be a DJ. And he had a, some equipment and like he moved out or something like that and left some of his like he left a keyboard behind like a Casio keyboard and um, it had like a uh, little colors on on the, the keys and I would just play it for like hours because like it was fun. I just liked hitting the keys. So like yeah. I don't have any formal training until like I get to school, really? but like I would just create melodies. So I remember one of my first ever like songs was just the song where i'd go and i was like maybe four and wow yeah it was just like me and i can still remember that yeah i could just and then there was another one where um it was just the black keys and i'd be like because like whenever you hit the black keys it always sounds pretty and it's very interesting you can play all the black keys together and it always sounds pretty it's very interesting how you have strong memories of music as a child and that really speaks to uh you know music's way of staying with us you know what i mean yeah, music uh, is memory. memory yeah 
Interesting. Um, and then like my parents, they weren't musical at all. They didn't play any instruments. Um, they just had like a, a acoustic guitar around the house. And I remember I would just like strum it and stuff. And like, it was always out of tune, but I knew that if I hit one string, it could just go up and down and be like, ding, 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 ding. And you know, like go up and down and stuff. And like, uh -huh. I, that just gave me pleasure. It was just doing that. Yeah. Oh, but do you know what the biggest one? I think the biggest one that actually like legitimately made me go like, holy shit, was, um, do you remember Home Alone? Yes. yes. Do you Fire remember the film. little recorder thing? The, the you know, little flute? flute? Recorder? Yeah. Oh, yes. The I had one of those. And all I would do is listen to like my recorder? voice and record myself and then play it backwards, like just play around with yeah. it. And that's what made me realize that's that I became a music producer. It was just recording and hearing myself. Like for the longest time, I hated my voice. Now I'm ab I absolutely love my voice. I think everyone's voice texture is so different. Like yeah. I could just listen to people's voices all day and it's like you get like a, a spiritual imprint of them. But um, do. I used to be obsessed with just like making myself sound fast, slowing myself down and like doing like dumb stuff with my voice. Nice. And, yeah, Too just cool. talking to myself. And that's where it really got started as a recording artist. Hmm. Hmm. We got a we got a question in chat if it's okay that I jump in. Soft Replica wants in. to know, how has it been converging a YouTube based fan base with fans of your music? specifically is there much crossover there is it, I, it's kind of crazy because i have this theory that uh there is like a hierarchy to art and if you're Hold a on. videographer if you just make videos more people are invested in you if you make a song they're only invested so much but once they see you hear your ideas see the visuals they are just like way more invested in your life or who you are as a person like even like okay. like have you ever seen the faceless YouTubers, like VTubers and stuff? Simply because yeah. they don't have a face, people are so obsessed with them. Even in the scene, right? People are obsessed with the people. Oh, that like that one guy that just people. had a face reveal. Yeah, <laughs> uh, dream. Oh, I don't, I don't know much about him, but people were clowning him because they were like, I guess, disappointed in the way he looked or something. The stuff like that actually terrifies me because, like, I I was kind of an asshole when I was like 18, and like I'd imagine <laughs> having a million people just like worship you. I wouldn't know what to do. I'd probably be like really solipsistic. Early when I was like Sol in my <laughs> teens and twenties, I was incredibly yeah. solipsistic. But like so much so that like I told you in my early videos, there's a lot of edge, there was a lot of angst, there was a lot of like just like you know punching the internet, and because of that, they punched me back. So that's why I've always thought I was like yeah, controversial you did make figure in the scene. Like um, I was telling you earlier, whenever I'd go to yeah, e that's, econ, that's it's a lot like, of eighteen year olds though, right? Yeah. Well, that's you grow up. I'm thirty now. now. <laughs> Like, it's crazy. When no, I was a kid, you are I thought... Age, you are ageless, sir. Aw, oh, thank you. Like, <laughs> when I was 15, I didn't know what 30 would be like, and I, I still feel, right. like, young inside. But, like, yeah. you know, time... Like, I feel wiser, too. Like, my music sounds way better than when I was 15. I actually have an album out. Um, it's from when I was 16, 17. It's, um, it's on, like, my first ever Spotify release. But, like, Very I listen cool. back to that, and one of the things is it still sounds like me but like the production's so low because i was using a mic from uh target it was like a a quarter inch mic and it was gotcha. like a little like webcam mic and i used to just sing into that my first actually like it's kind of embarrassing but, but still I, you I, it's still your it's still your persona that's it's, yeah that, and your way of doing things going through it. Yeah. my first ever youtube videos were just me singing guitar and playing it on the internet and that's where i, I found out like I really cut my chops because people just told you yeah. how they felt. Like they'd be like, "You suck at singing." You, Damn. You get, get better, and then I was like, "Okay." And then I started just getting better. <laughs> Good advice. <laughs> oh, right, okay. yes, sir, I will. And then I one thing I used to do is I used to upload MIDI. So I I drew like this weird like clock. Like I, I was really into Salvador Dali and surrealism. So it's mm -hmm. still on my Bandcamp. If you go to frankjeffc.com, uh, well the Bandcamp Frank Jeff C. The background is actually this thing I drew in middle school. And like, I, I keep that as a reminder to like, make me remember why I do this. Cause it was fun and I was young and I wanted to like, just create stuff. And my little 8-bit guy, like he was like my- Yeah, that guy. A... Yeah, I did that when I, I did that in MS Paint in like uh, eighth grade. That's a <laughs> fucking just, iconic like... avatar. You know what's funny? Like, everybody knows the Frank 8-bit guy. Yeah, I see yeah, him I'll in like the wild sometimes, like in peak comics. Oh, really, like, did you do? Yeah, like people just download oh, it. That's so wild. And you know, like, it's like, repurpose him. It created like a subgenre because I saw so many other YouTubers that like have like an animated guy. He has like a red sweater and like a little swoopy oh, hair. And I was like, right. what the fuck? Like, bro, that's, that's me. That's your, <laughs> that's your g genetic imprint into the, uh, you know, into the zeitgeist. Yeah, the meme sphere. Um, the but like, sphere, I feel like yeah. I've, I've outgrown him a little bit because like I, I'm a man Dude. now.
Do you think that we outgrow like all the things that we do eventually? No. Do you think we grow? Do you think we outgrow all of the art we make at some time, or or no? No, you don't think so. I think it just evolves. Like, um, I I think about like I like talking to my friends about this. Like, I want to yeah. be really old one day. I I'm trying to manifest this. Like, I want to at least be a centarian, like a hundred years old, simply so I can yeah, tell them like I was Me born too. before YouTube, and they're like, what the fuck. <laughs> We got a great question from Quiz. He says, how do you think anonymous or faceless personalities can reconcile not having people be attached to them if they don't have an appearance? Is anonymity of any kind important for the scene or has its time passed? It depends on the artist. I think um, if you want to be anonymous and that's good for you, just be anonymous. Um, mm -hmm. Nobody has to know your life story, your face. They, As long as they know your art, that's all that matters, you know? Some people, they want to be seen. I'm very much an exhibitionist. Like, I want to be seen. I yeah. wear loud colors. I like to be boisterous. I like to, like, open my arms. And, like, yeah. when I go to clubs, I love dancing and making sure everyone dances with me. Some people may not have that, uh, like, just within themselves. So it's okay to just be uh you know an avatar or just have your art speak for for itself very good also point. think it's like i'm a performer like even right, right now I, I feel like i'm performing yeah just I at think, all times like i think performing is fun as shit but some people like i guess get really really anxious or or yeah. you know they have there's myriad reasons for wanting to be anonymous i guess you yeah know, also no, like copyright too well, you know, good yeah. Point. The other thing Very is, like, it's point. funny. There, are, there are there are artists who like, you know, the the art they make is a different persona, and then there are artists who like everything is them all the time. And mm -hmm. I imagine, you know, I, I believe I'm someone who's just everything I do is all is me all the time. I think that you're probably like that as well. You know, but yeah. some people do create another personality for their art. You know, I've and, been wanting uh, to do that. I can never do it. I keep trying to do that. I can't. Yeah, it's hard, right? Because like, you <laughs> you, want, yeah, it's like you're one you or the other. I feel like most of the time. I can't like create another that. thing. I can't do another thing. Yeah. But you Everything know what's funny? Me. When I first started making videos, I had a persona, and I did it as a defense mechanism because um, I didn't want people to know the real me. So that's why, like, I, as I started aging, I started becoming more myself, like who I am. But if you watch all my videos, I used to be like, "Hello, everyone. My name is Frank, and this is how yeah. I'm going to talk for the entire video." Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It was very dry. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Of course. Yeah. And I did that purposefully because I was scared. Like honestly, I did it as a. I remember I, 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 I thought it was funny. Um, I did it because I was masking. I remember I was talking to um. Go on with <laughs> I don't the want to name drop, but like, I was talking to Filthy Frank about this because I remember he liked my content back in the day. Oh wow, that's crazy. And I started talking to him about the character, and he told me like stuff like, oh, he didn't want to do it for too long because he can't just be that guy forever, right? You yeah, know, think thing forever. He, yeah, he was actually physically harming him. So like, really? that's the same thing I was doing was I was creating a character, but then I realized that I couldn't just be that character forever. And slowly, eventually it started slipping away. I'm like, okay, this is, this is just me making a video. Gotcha. That's interesting. Would you say that you're yeah. pretty, pretty much like fully yourself now with most of the content that you're making? I think as we age, we become more and more ourselves. That's why like, I, I wish I knew more old people. If that sounds <laughs> Because, like, I, I rarely, like, I'm, I'm starting to meet more older people, like I told you, people in their late 30s, early 40s, and I, I want to meet more, like, established artists that have made it that are, like, you know, in their 50s, 60s. I want to talk to, like, the producers that made the music in yeah. the 2000s. They're still alive. They're just, like, much older yeah. now. Um, Because, like, I, I've never really had, like, a mentor. I've always just kind of just done what I wanted to do. And, you know, the ego yeah. of the youth when you're, like... Oh no! Nobody knows what's right. I'm the one who like knows everything, right? You know, um. So I I do feel like I'm becoming more and more myself, and then like maybe ten years from now, I'll look back at thirty year old me and be like, "Damn, you stupid." <laughs> <laughs> LMAO. Yeah. Well, you you grow, right? You live and you learn. Do you feel like you've changed your brand a whole lot, or do you feel like it's it's just evolved and and kind of grown up? You know, it's funny. Um, right now. My music is the most listened to it's ever been, ever. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. In yeah. social media, I have I've been losing followers since 2019. So mm -hmm. on my, hmm. on not on my Spotify, my YouTube, my Instagram, my Twitter, every yeah. day I lose like 20 followers. So I've just been on a down. 
upward spiral, but like on my music, it just keeps growing because people are discovering new songs, they're sharing new songs, it's showing up on TikTok, it's right, it's going everywhere. But like that's kind of what I wanted was I just wanted my music you to be to heard. Do the music, you know what I mean? That's interesting because you know that's what it yeah. seems like. Yeah, what you wanted to do anyway, and you are mm -hmm. moving towards that. I also do have some trauma where it comes to YouTube because like have I ever told what? you I had a stalker? Oh no, man! I, you never told me about that. Okay, so in Dish. 2017, I got a, I got a, it, I just got a like uh, someone that delivers flowers. They gave me a funeral fa flowers, and That's in creepy. the funeral flowers, yeah, in the funeral flowers was also a bottle of wine and chocolate, and a letter that had like a, a QR code that when you scanned it sent you to a video, and the video was a playlist of a bunch of pictures of me and my sister when we were young, and Ooh. it was like this. Yeah, it was noise music with like code inside and stuff like that. Excuse and, me. Yeah, what it was fuck? super. It, it was like it was like in like what are they called like, a AR no not AR, like a, a role playing thing. Like I th at first I thought it was like LARPing. an elaborate. Well, yeah, I'm and like it legitimately LARPing. terrified me. Like just seeing all this shit and like most of the the thing was like how they wanted to like fuck my little sister because like what? <laughs> oh my God, yeah. that's so awful. That was. That was the biggest Ugh. no homo I've ever got. I was like, I was making these videos because I wanted the audience to fuck me, not my sister. And like, <laughs> I was like, really good job. <laughs> so I, we ended up calling the the flower people and we're like, hey, can you tell us who anonymously sent us all this stuff? And they're like, oh, we can't do that. I'm like, yeah, but like, it's actually really fucked up the things that they send us. They're like, yeah, it was really weird. Um, we yeah, can give right. you like um, the, the return address. And it was like some random guy from Canada. And I, I later yeah. found out it was like, an older, like, I, I don't know, just obviously not well individual. Right. Who found my videos and was just obsessed with my sister. And, like, he found our address because it's easy. You can find anyone's address. I thought that's also learned. You just find people's addresses. It was a scary way to figure out that information. Oh my God. Yeah. So Damn. then I emailed him and I was like, hey, I'm going to be real with you. If you ever contact us again, I'm going to call, call the police on you. This is not, like, uh, appropriate behavior. My sister's only yeah. 16. And I was, like, really mad because, like, I was doing all this stuff to get famous. I wanted people to know yeah. me. And then this guy got like a weird obsession with my little sister and then like started like making creepy art. But the thing is like, I I feel like he was he was trying to like also just like hurt me or make me not want to make content or something. Cause like outside this weird feeling, he hated me. Cause like the, the stuff he put in there was like That's malicious. That's so weird. Like, he, would, he would warp our kids pictures to be all like distorted and evil and shit. And use our use the image because like I love watching music through like a, a spectrograph. He'd put stuff in the spectrograph that was like just fucked up, and I was like, "Hey, don't ever contact me again." His name was like Damaged Sid. I think that was his email. Damaged, Damaged Sid. Sid. Yeah, and uh, I got his email from the the flower people, and then afterwards, like I wanted to make a video talking about it, about like because that I actually my volume Frank Jesse Volume Two is all about parasocial relationships and how like oh, that was that's like interesting. A, a, yeah, it was you like I noticed that a little bit. Yeah. Damn. Fucking fascinating. That... Honestly, I think there's a big problem with parasocial relationships in this scene. No disrespect. Yeah. I mean, but like lots of people when they don't get noticed or they don't get the reaction that they want from somebody that's like, you know, an yeah. artist, they start tripping, man. Yeah. And then that's not even like the the worst. The, well, that was the worst because it was scary, but it was also artistic. I didn't like that it had like some sort of like um there was like an elaborate, like um, a large amount of effort put into like almost terrifying me. And that's that's one of the things that I didn't like because like I didn't like that they put so much time and effort into creating this elaborate game. And so yeah. I didn't want to talk about it. I wanted to talk about it publicly. I, f I actually filmed myself scrolling through all the the YouTube links and watching the, the thing. And I was like legit freaking out. But then I realized if I upload this to YouTube, I'm going to get copycats. I'm going to get other people being like, oh, that's yeah. funny. I'm going to fuck with Frank that way. Cause yeah, you don't want to turn like, that into a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I was edgy, like I remember I made fun of young lean, a young lean fan hacked my, uh, my PayPal through my Tumblr. I screenshot how much money I had, my home address, and then uploaded it to Twitter. What is wrong with people? It's a, it's a jungle. Probably a parasocial really young lean fan. Oh, yeah, Frank Gussie, please take. You are a national treasure. Please take care of the yourself. The crazy part was they went through you. my Tumblr. 
They went through my Tumblr messages and screenshotted everyone I was talking to on Tumblr. Like, I'm not like a, a creepy guy, so I wasn't like messaging people like all salaciously. Like, I didn't right. even use Tumblr like, a lot. Salaciously. But, like, I felt so like exposed. Like, it was like oh, this imagine, person was yeah. so mad at me that they like <laughs> wanted to like show everyone. Like, look at this is how much they fucking showed how much money I had, and they made fun of me because I only had six hundred dollars in my PayPal, and I was <laughs> <laughs> fucking fueling the class consciousness even more. <laughs> Yeah, By the way, can I just say, I love that you have as just as much of an SAT vocabulary that Skelly does. You were like, oh, solipsistic, salacious. Yeah. You're a doctor? What? Yeah, I'm a doctor in Groove. Doctor me, uh, Dr. Frank. You got me! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Skelly, you got some more biographical got questions for this man? when he does his DJing. Oh, fuck. Do I have some questions? Yeah, he I, does. I've I, seen I this man it, DJ, and, then, and he's like, ridiculously the thing is that when, good. When Frank talks, it's just a tornado of interesting things, and, like, I'm, Perfect. Like, like, I'm also, like, Guess. half sick right now, too, and I'm like, oh, wait, what were my questions? <laughs> yeah, you're good, you're good. <laughs> Let me think here for a second. Wait, going... no, I do. I, wait, I, wanna, I do have a question, actually. Um, I really, this is one I definitely want to get to, is, you know, how, it's one thing for you to make the video about, you know, the vaporwave, and we know the story behind that now, but at what point do you really start getting involved in making friends with people who are vaporwave producers and really sort of, um, you know, assimilating yourself into this little world? You know, when, when did that start happening? Around what time does that really happen? Right. Right after I dropped my video. Um, at first I told you it was very negative because like uh, people who I can't be... Don't, I don't want to name because you know they're infamous in the scene. They yeah, were just know. like, "This guy fucking sucks." Frank Jeff sees the worst. Blah blah. blah. Just telling everyone about me and why no I'm sense of humor. Yes, they didn't know what a creative genius you are yet. No, because they of that, people were like, yet. "Who is this guy? Why yeah. does this guy? Why is? Why does he seem <laughs> like this guy so much?" I'm gonna check out his video. <laughs> Boom! Right. That's how it works, right? Yeah. I mean, so, even in the the trap scene, I had haters. I remember like one of the biggest lo-fi producers was mad that I didn't reference them, and I was like, yes. I was literally oh. talking about New Jobs and like Jay Dilla. I'm sorry yeah. I didn't reference you. Jesus Christ! Yeah, you don't get to put in the same sentence as them. So sorry. So then, then who's like the first one person that you really start making friends with, and you know? Um, you know who introduced me to like uh, the group that I got really close to was um Encarta. Cause I remember Shout out uh, Encarta. Encarta. Oh, yeah, Encarta just straight up Encarta. DM'd me and was like, hey, do you want to be on a podcast? And I've always wanted a podcast. That was like the big thing. I've always wanted to just uh, hang out with friends and just talk because I, I right. just love talking. So like, yeah. I was like, hell yeah. But then like, it was also kind of like, I, I can't go back to and listen to that. Cause I remember uh, me and Marion, we went to go like to a Japanese restaurant and we drank a lot of sake. So yeah. like in the podcast, <laughs> I'm just fucked up. Shout, Damn. shout out Marion, by the way, who's also a phenomenal artist in her own right. And, oh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I love her. I always uh, check out her Instagram stories, and she's so cool. She's the yeah, best. she's strong as fuck. Yeah, you should see the videos of her fuck. pegging me on uh, OnlyFranks. It's uh, OnlyFranks. Damn, Frank. you should com. drop a link. Yeah, 20 bucks a month, and you see me just getting pegged. <laughs> Marion is awesome. I love that. She's girl. got a beautiful so, voice, too. I love the tracks people. that you guys have collaborated on. I you know what's funny? Can we talk about that? To, uh, to So Damn Beautiful all the time. Yeah, So Damn Beautiful. Actually, that one, that one's like, um, that one's a, that one hits in the heart. <laughs> you know, that one line, story like, about that? La, 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 how are you so familiar? I'm going to tear up Here's now. the thing. Stop. I told you edgy people Aww. back in the day. I uploaded a picture of uh, me and Marion uh, singing a, a song, and then I don't want to use the exact wording they used. It was like kind of racist in inclination, but um, they just called her ugly. And I remember she cried and I was Gross. like, you're not ugly. You're so damn beautiful. And then like that kind of stuck with me. I was like, huh, what if someone like, I don't know why the, the way that word came out so damn beautiful. So I wanted to make her feel beautiful. So I wrote this song and then we had it like a, a duet. Originally it was, um, you know, Jeno P by Eric Sadie. Yeah. Yeah. So it was that chopped up. Cause oh, I was, really? at the time, yeah. And at the time, I was um, I was like getting more into like lo-fi. This is before lo-fi like blew the fuck up. Oh So man. I was like sampling because I love the sound of a piano when you cut it up. Like, like it sounds almost. I have I got a track for you that I'll send you later. Thank you. So yeah, I wrote that, and then I ended up meeting this producer um, named Frank Music. Everyone thinks Frank Music Ooh. is me, but it was like another no, guy. No, Frank, Frank Music was extremely popular. Thank you so much. Back in the day. Frank, Frank Music was was a big deal back in the uh, yeah. So he hit me up. He's like, you know hey, I mean? he, was, he was very popular. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, hey, do you want to work on a track? And I was like, hell yeah. That's so he made it was very popular in the day. So, so, do, so, so you like collaborating? 
Would you say I that he's a, he's a, I hear he's not so great these days, though. Like, <laughs> yeah, let's, I've let's seen that. Let's <laughs> yeah, not talk about not... that. He was a big deal back in the early 2000s. Yeah. He was all over. It's the not bad. It's world. just like politics. His politics are. Uh, yeah, yeah. He was all he yeah. was all over the place in the blockhouse world in the 2000s. So he was a big deal. So that's so pretty cool. Do you like collaborating with people then, Frank? I or love what are it. Your, what are your thoughts? He loves it. OK. Yeah. I when you collab with youthful. people. I collab a lot, actually. Do you I, usually I, like, start the after. collabs, or do they usually start and send them to you? Um, it's a mix. Um, yeah. Normally, if I see talent, like whenever I, one of my favorite things is finding a gem. Like um, my my buddy, hi, I'm Chris. Yeah. He's absolutely yeah. talented. I am Chris. Fuck. When I first saw him, he sent me his song Pineapple Soda. It only had like 200 plays, and I was like, how the fuck does this not have plays? So then I reached out to him, and then like, he's actually like. He's come through so many times with just like bangers after bangers and we just like work together. It's super simple. It's like it's like mm -hmm. playing a video game with someone. Like yeah. we just go back and forth. Um but he also saved my life on multiple occasions. Like I told you about really? the Young Bay show where I got booed. Um I stood at his NYU dorm cuz I didn't have like uh uh money to really stay at a hotel or anything like that. That show was so crazy because I got booked by this guy who worked for Good Good what was it called? Good Good what? good book touring some something like goodwill touring i don't know what it was okay so they're right. like yeah um uh i could get you on this young bay show our, our our analytics show that you guys are related artists because you know the algorithm okay. puts me with all the vaporwave future funk people yeah, um yeah. and he's like yeah we're gonna pay for your plane ticket uh, a hotel and everything and then like Sick. a week before the show i was like hey i thought you guys were gonna pay for myself he's like oh yeah by the way i left to start my own touring company um oh so, yeah. my god so what you'll get happened. so he they paid me five hundred dollars for that gig. It was a sold out night at Ouseware Hall, and they only gave me five hundred dollars for that. And the tickets were like thirty bucks, and that's like you. Yeah, I know. So Boo I didn't to know them, I not you. Yeah, I was I was dumb. Now I know like my worth. Like I'm like, yo, pay my flight. I'll get it myself. I'll do everything myself. Just give me this amount of money, and I'll show up to your city. But um, I, that was like my first time ever flying and everything, and uh, I didn't have a place to stay. So Chris was like, yeah, I go to NYU. My roommates are, are leaving for, I forget what they were. They were like leaving for some sort of like event or something. So he had an extra bed and me and Marion slept on that bed with Chris in his NYU dorm for that show. Really? Yeah. Wow, for the sold out show with Young Bay. The things we'll do to open for Young Bay. NYU. Yeah, and then the like the fabulous crazy thing lifestyle of Frank Jabsy. Okay, me and Chris had been wow. talking, but he saw me at such a extreme high and extreme low because I was super excited. First time in New York, I was like, "Oh my god, this is so great!" I had just done a sold out show in Los Angeles. It was my first. It was like my um, my first ever show I did all by myself. It's called the '90s House Party. We sold 250 tickets, and mm -hmm. it was like a bunch of kids from all around uh, California, and like people drove as far as like I think NorCal just to see me mm -hmm. perform. And like it was so great, it was so like wholesome. Everyone there had watched my videos. Everyone danced. We had a good time. The next week, I flew to New York. I show up to the sold out New York uh, venue, and I start singing. And people are just like, "What the hell is this? This sucks. Get off the stage. You fucking suck." And I remember I'm singing this song, uh, "Crazy Wavy Baby." It's like the song about yeah. obsession and stuff. It's during the time I where I told you I had like that crazy yeah. stalker guy, and that was song. like a part of the idea of that's um, what that obsession. song's about. Wait, what? Yeah. I love it's that song. It's about obsession and like wanting yeah. someone so bad that it's driving you crazy. Damn. So I'm singing this song, and I remember oh, wow. specifically a guy in like a really like New Jersey accent be like, "You fucking suck! Get off the stage!" God, God damn! What is wrong with people? I don't think yeah, I've ever done like, that shit, and I've seen so many shows, shows that there. sucked. Yeah, so I run a I show called Hot Takes, so, and I've never yelled that to somebody. Fuck them. Yeah, and like stuff like that, like really makes me like that's like the like yeah. that's the one that was like repeating because like I don't know if I have OCD or some sort of like neurological loop, but that shit kept repeating in my head like over and over and over again. So like my, my friend Chris, who I just met, like, he saw me at Extreme High, and then he sees me just like bawling backstage, being like, "This shit sucks. Everybody hates me. I'm a fraud." <laughs> So, because of the extremities, like, he's one of my closest homies, and I love collaborating with him. I'll do whatever yeah. he wants me to do. We've done, like, crazy shows together. Um, yeah, he's come down to yeah, L.A. and performed plenty of times, I want to say, no? Yeah, um, we actually did a show where it was, like, uh, Matt Watson's first ever performance. Yeah, we were a year ago. Yeah. Show, and we are just hanging out, and I was like, hey, Matt, do you want to play a show with me? He's like, okay. But the thing is, like, Matt's, like, ten times fucking bigger than me because he's, like, huge on YouTube. Yeah. So he was like, hey, I'm doing a show. Tickets sell out instantly. Yeah, <laughs> this was I the asked, Pacific Plaza like, show, right? A year yeah. ago. I, I asked Alex, I was like, hey, how many tickets have you sold? He was like, I think 20. I was like, okay, 
Matt says he wants to perform. As soon as it goes live, it's probably going to close. And as soon as he did that, it was just sold out instantly. It was like a hundred cap. <laughs> I was supposed to fucking DJ that show too, but I got real sick. Aw. But it Rest is what it is. I was supposed feet. to do a back to back with uh, Feats, but it just Oh, wasn't nice. I really like Feats. Feats is I like so Feats cool. too. Feats very, very that, skilled yeah. individual. I met all those guys like around that time. And like, right. honestly, I still hang out with them. Like, I still see them at shows and they're just great guys. Like, I just love their right. energy. I love that they love to have fun. They know how to like, you know, play music. My favorite thing about DJing is like, when you meet other DJs, they just get it. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, yeah, well, <laughs> like, you're a wonderful DJ. Most of the time, I agree. You, you're a wonderful DJ. I you are. Like to DJ you're with very you again. I, really want I, to. I would love to DJ with you again at some point soon. We had a great time at Chi Chill NorCal with you and Fancy Cat. Yeah, can we talk about that now? Now that I'm done with all the negative stuff, I want to talk yeah, about right. the positive. Let's stuff do it. That made... Talk about the positive stuff. Yeah. Let's do yeah. it. Do you remember Terminally Chill when I was playing Sandstorm and people were jumping so much? The venue was like, "Hey, can you make them calm down?" And I did the shake. Literally shake that whole patio. I did the sickest transition of my life, and it was an accident. So it was like, so tell me what you want. What you want? I remember that so distinctly. Wow! And I just like freaked out because I loved how surprised the audience was by that. That's so clean, fun, and I don't think anybody saw that coming. And I do. And how do you match the sandstorm energy? How do you match the sandstorm energy? You right. go. Rah, no wonder you DJ Shrek Ray. Like, that's that's how you get a new energy, but it's a, you've got a, a matched energy that's completely different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Amazing, wonderful work. I totally but, remember like, that. Yeah, because then we went from like 150 to like 100, and then it was nothing but bumping and grinding music. And I remember I saw I did like the 2000s because 2000s oh, all that was 100. So fun. And then everyone was just like bumping and grinding. Like there was no more jumping. They were just like, you should do a show with iClick as your opener. That'd be fun. That would I be like perfect. Click. The whole like '90s and 2000s R&B vibe. You know what I, I like about uh, iClick is um, I forgot uh, who messaged me. I think Will messaged yeah. me, and like, mm -hmm. I also I went back and like apparently Will messaged me like a long ass time ago, and I was like, what? Like you've known me this? I believe long? that. And the same thing with uh, Nrail. Like yeah. uh, Nrail, one time just sent me like a weird meme, and then I sent him a weird meme back, and it was like 2060. <laughs> I was like, "What? They've known me this long." Shout out to those guys. <laughs> Shout out! I click friends of the show. Yeah, I love yeah. clicking my eye. Yeah, I click yeah, with my absolutely. eye. You I'm um, a woman, buddy. <laughs> yeah, you 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 seem to just really be a natural at DJing. You you, you have such a fun time doing it. You're, you're so good. I mean, it, it feels like a natural thing for you too, with your extroversion and ability to read crowds and people in general. It just feels like such a natural fit for you when you do yeah. it. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I see a question by uh, yeah. Please Kama. answer that question. Good on you, man. Who are the most exciting uh, newcomers in uh, vaporwave, in your opinion? It, it's funny you say that because like. I remember specifically this one person uh, wrote an article about how I didn't know who they were at Econ 1. And <laughs> I was like, have you ever talked to me? Have you ever like like said, Ooh. hey? Yeah. And like because of that, I was like kind of like taken aback. I'm like, I, I'm sorry I don't know you, but you've never talked to me. And yeah. so like with newcomers in the scene, like I feel like a lot of them tend to just like show their music and think it's gonna like blow up everywhere. But like you really have to talk to people and meet people. And I really you haven't do. met anyone new in the Vaporwave scene. I've been meeting more people in like the rap producer, singer songwriter scene, because they send me their stuff. Like if yeah. you're new in the Vaporwave scene, just send your music to someone and be like, hey, um, I I was inspired by your your work here. Here's what my music sounds like. And you know, most of the time I'm actually gonna listen to it because like just yeah. of how like nice they are to me. So yeah. there you go. most of the new people I see in the scene are like what people retweet are people that I met at, at shows and they're like yeah i make a uh, vaporwave music too so like i'm i think the, the the last vaporwave tape i'm on was like uh the the froggy wave tape volume two <laughs> shout out yeah. and that, from that one i was just listening to them like, i had never heard any of these people and there's like you know 20 i don't know how there's like a bunch of people like i'm probably even four i don't even know there's just a shit ton of people uh, and I was it's just a like, long ass comp yeah and i was like wow there are so many new people out there but like personally if you want me to listen to your music just send it to me because like i i follow the algorithm when i go on youtube i'd like do you see this video behind me yeah that's a sick video i meant to compliment it forever ago yeah it's just vaporwave christmas mix that's what i listen to i just put that on i don't know who any of these artists are it's just something that i hear in the background you know hell yeah so honestly to answer the question um <laughs> i don't know <laughs> 
if they if they if they talk to me, we're, well, we're chilling. Who's you know the last I mean? artist that you found that you were just like, damn, this is, I really fuck with this. Like, yeah, oh my god, this scene in general in the scene. Well, That's no, crazy. how about both in general and within the scene? How about both? Oh my yeah, god, I found Pink both. Pantheris a long nice. ass time ago, and that shit hit. Nice. Like People I was are... like, mm. I have Let's yet see, to listen up. to Pink Pantheris, but I hear it's fucking fire. I, I just listen to a lot of like um, vaporwave compilations, like when I'm bored. Like if I have like right. if I'm like really high, like not gonna lie, if I'm just like really <laughs> stoked, I don't feel that vibe. I'll just like put it on. You know what's funny? Um, they're not new in the scene. But I started actually listening to the music and just like super going like, holy shit, this is important. This is amazing. Was uh, Luxury Elite. I had never really listened to any Luxury Elite tracks. Oh, and then when I finally listened to Luxury Elite, I was like, like you get what it. The fuck? This goes so hard. <laughs> so hard. So hard. She's it's quite amazing. the sample sample queen. Yeah. And like because and of that. She's only gotten like, better. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, she's only gotten so, better. And like also simply from interacting with people at Econ, like I... I don't really go I try to go out of my way to listen to mu new music but I don't go within like scenes and stuff like that it just kind of comes to me right so like right now I've been listening to a lot of jazz so I've been listening to like jazz from Africa or jazz from like uh Eastern European countries and just like jazz in general I went through a whole city pop phase recently where I, I was digging deep into like what makes city pop sound like city pop and one of the big things I've been doing is I've been playing along to city pop songs like I just get out my guitar and I try to play with them my sax I play along with them and like you so kind of learn the language like you don't learn you don't like music's a language of emotion you don't yeah. really know how to talk to someone until you play with them and it's like you're having a conversation but yeah if you're if they're if you're new in the scene um and who are you excited about like who do you think i would be excited about because you know i fuck heavy with like just uh music that makes you move yeah because oh, i know man. a lot of yeah. down chris tempo. chris should you answer that question first because whenever you guys ask me anything i always get just put on the fucking spot I mean, I had to first ask you a question. What is your opinion of, uh, you know, what do you listen to a lot of future funk? Um, I listen to a lot of city pop. Um, you know what's weird? My the friends that I met along the way. Okay, you know what? I do have some newcomers. So I recently did a show in Arizona with the Arizona scene out there, and I met them, V8 hung 10. out with them, got along with them, and then like because of that, I started listening to their music, and they started showing me their music. It's a real really? organic process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now Who did like listen I, to? I, I'd be interested to know that. Yeah. Let's see. Let me see their name. So uh, that's one uh, of them's that's before. Chief Leaf and uh, VA10, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Chief great bunch of guys. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, then I also met like a Nekun with a Kanga. Yep. Was it Kanga Corp? Yeah. And then Kanga, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Midnight Drift is, is is a banger. And then even um, I think uh, He's great. they were here earlier. I wonder if they're still here. But Caspro Town, Caspro goes okay. hard. Like all the synthwave stuff. I'm I really fuck heavy with synthwave right now. Like synthwave is very offshoot vaporwave, but it has such mainstream appeal that yeah. like everyone's yeah. doing it. You it really I mean? is blowing up, isn't it? Oh, yeah, and then you know what? Um, I, I barely started talking to to Groovy, uh, Groovy yeah. Kaiju. Yeah, Groovy Kaiju yeah shout out. I know Groovy Kaiju's been in the scene forever, but like yeah, we barely best. started talking like two. You guys have been hanging out a lot together, right? You yeah. have, oh, like, yeah. And then that whole like just listening to Groovy Kaiju's music, I, I suddenly like started making more friends, like just local. And so like awesome. I just kind of meet people in the scene, like in real life. I'm not very internet digital i find that i'm more in real life I'll, I'll i'll meet these people and then i'll listen to their music it becomes a part of my um my catalog like one of the things i wanted to talk about was like um when people say like what music do you listen to i realized <laughs> i go yeah i listen to a lot of my friends music yeah like, straight up if you're a friend right? of mine, then, like i Love listen that. to your music quiz has a really and, good um, question for you buddy um but i don't i'll let you finish that thought my bad no, I, I think I, I'm good. I was just that's really out. funny how how that how that is. It's like, oh, you know what? I, what do I listen to lately? I'm actually you are very much more a, a, a person to be experienced live, as it were, not just yeah. as a performer, but as like a person. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. you know, it, it's true. And uh, and you know, speaking as someone who has hung out with you live before, I feel the same way. Yeah. You remember Guys, we got quiz together. <laughs> quiz wants to know it's what delicious. are some collabs Absolutely. that you want to do that you haven't done yet, Frank? I have a lot of collabs. I've been wanting to get the Dan Mason one out. We have a song together. It's about, Damn. um, yeah, it's That's about working be good. together. It's, um, how does it go? Cause I actually wrote that in an experience where like, um, I told you about the young bass show where they're like booing me. And I was just like, I just wanted to yeah. dance. 
And yeah. because like my music wasn't sample based, it was all like original stuff. Like, of course, I'm never going to be as good as a sample that was built by musicians from the 80s who spent their whole life actually playing stuff. Like, I right. was still getting rudimentary into that. I think I'm getting there now. That's why I, I knew that point in my life, I had to level up. That's when I knew, objectively speaking, I wasn't a good enough musician. You know what I mean? Like, when I looked out to the crowd and I saw them, like, that's when I knew I wasn't good enough to be there. And I was like, well, fuck, how do I get good enough to be there? So, um, the song is, uh, I wish I could play it for you, but, like, yeah, uh, me too. It, it, it's still a work in progress. I could actually send you the, the demo. That would be but sick as fuck, dude. Release that shit. We, we will eventually, because I wanted to shoot a music video, too. Midnight oh, Drift is in the chat, too. There Midnight you know. Drift yeah, just showed up. Shout out Midnight Drift. I got to meet them in uh, Mesa as well. And I think we're both from Vegas. So nice. that's cool as fuck. Yeah. I'm going to grab another drink. You okay. need to, you wanted to do what in Vegas? I want to DJ Vegas so bad. I want to I want to DJ oh, Sin City. Man. It's you, I, you better get ready to play some Tech House, man, or some DM. I'm going to play LMFAO over and over again. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Mary's like, I got this. I got this. Yeah. I'll play the LMFAO. Shot, 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 shot. <laughs> Where do you get your inspiration from when you start writing music? Where does it start? A feeling. Yeah. Yeah. It seems yeah. like it. It seems like every song, one of your songs really does come from like a, a specific thing, like that you are yeah. thinking about at the time that you're gonna flesh out and put music around and um, basically tell us a little bit of a of a story along with um, basically surrounded by like hugged by a big feeling. You know what I mean? And yeah. Each one of your, all your songs all have a different bit of a sensation to them. You know what I mean? That's like, what I try to do. Nothing is exactly the same. Um, that's like one of my big, uh, my hot takes is I don't like music that it, the artist just makes the same song over and over again. Yeah. That's Damn. one of my big But what if it's is good? Like, Damn, Well, <laughs> I'm still going to be like, is this the same song? Over you like artists <laughs> to evolve. <laughs> yeah. Well, you like I artists like, to uh, be eclectic. Like maybe they do a lot of different things. Sometimes yeah. people would say that they get too distracted when an artist is doing too many different things. They, 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 they'll still say it's not cohesive. Like, that's a fear that I have sometimes because I, I'll try a lot of different things and I worry, is this cohesive enough? You know what I mean? Right. How do you make an album cohesive if you're doing many different things? Do you just try, I mean, you just try and keep that, like, it's all a different thing, but it's the same that's, person making it and you can tell. Sometimes I'm lots of different sounds are fun, though. I was going to say, because you were like, how do you make an album? I've never really been an album artist. I just kind of release songs. And I'm more of a mixtape artist. I've never sat down and been like, this is a complete work that is supposed to be played yeah, as an like album. Like a concept album. Interesting. Yeah, I just focus on on the song. And I have so many unfinished songs. Like, I think if I were to open up my Google Drive, that's one of the big yeah. things. Uh, young producers out there, put your shit on the cloud. <laughs> right. Just Start a Patreon. Hard drive will just... Release those beats. Yeah. Um. So I have like over like... 1500 unreleased just uh projects in like the past maybe whoa five years yeah and um the the fil like to filter through which ones are good i just like kind of print them and i put them on my phone and the ones i listen to the most those are like the ones that i'm gonna release you know mm -hmm. but then okay the hardest part for me as an artist as soon as i release it i don't listen to it anymore like that's like one of the weird hard that's parts of it really interesting really? Yeah. it like loses I saw a its question um by uh yeah short, short, um eight, eight, eight. yeah you want to go automatic and address overdrive. that yeah so automatic overdrive is the song that i was going to release for an album i had a concept album and it like here's one of my things i feel like i i saw a tweet the other day that's like when god gives you an idea and you don't act upon it someone else he'll give it to someone else and like i was i remember i've, I've been wanting to make a playstation inspired album since like 2019 yes. but like it was going to be all very like it was, it was going to be more Final Fantasy-esque. Like, have you ever heard, like, uh, the Parasite Eve soundtrack? Boom, boom, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, no, ba but I haven't heard no, but every I'm going Final to Fantasy to right now. Yeah, it's very jungle-inspired, very, like, uh, ethereal. So okay. um, I was, I've always fun. been inspired by JRPGs. That's why, like, when uh, I met yes. a quip, I was like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> yes. We actually have a song together. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Um, So, like, I wanted to make a, a PlayStation-inspired uh, album. And so Automatic Overdrive was the first part of that. Uh, actually, no, it was the second part. I, 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 they co I combined songs because when I started DJing, I started realizing you could just c put songs together and make them flow in certain Good ways. Good point. Yeah, so that song's um, just like a PlayStation-inspired breakbeat song about being 
um, um like a robot like that's straight up what it is it's just like you're a robot and you're just automatic and you're pushing yourself to the maximum and that leads into a song called love no more which is about straight up just being in love with two people at the same time and having and not knowing how to tear yourself apart <laughs> so like i'm like i really hope nobody notices that <laughs> so i just kind of like sing it and be like oh, la, 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 la. do you ever feel like you um you have more lighthearted material than you do like like dark or like you know kind of brooding material or is like yeah. any, any thoughts on that do you like well, sad I, music do you like making it yeah that, i do have the song um i love hating you was a very broody dark album as it goes on it was like a, a little ep like the last track is the most emotional thing i've probably ever released but i'm, I'm very like that's the thing about like i guess Man, fandom right. yeah you're Mama, with Mama, us. Yeah. sorry buddy <laughs> all right let's circle um like if you're like if you're like a, a real like a frank head <laughs> you'd listen all frank the way to head. the end and be like holy shit like yeah. that this last one's crazy <laughs> like because like that like the the most darkest songs i have only get like maybe like ten thousand plays like they're not like popular like i got you i love hating the darkest like, song is um <sighs> Yeah, the darkest song I have is uh, the last song on I Love Hating You. You know what's funny? I can't even listen to that because I'd probably cry. So, like, really? Yeah. That whole situation is yeah. something I don't really talk about publicly, but like of during course, that time, during quarantine, there was like the, cr I was going through like the craziest shit and I was like, holy fuck. Like, I, I journal a lot and yeah. one day I do want to release because like, one of my first idols was actually like one of the worst people to like just idolize. But I was like super into Kurt Cobain when I was like thirteen. I, yeah, because like I was like, whoa, this guy that did heroin and killed himself and made cool music. He's so epic. I want to be just <laughs> like that. LMAO. So hey, now we that, need you. Yeah, I'm not gonna do instead that. Instead of the Jim Morrison now. phase, you had that one instead. Yeah. Well, also because like I don't know, I'd like up upbeat aggressive music so my I love, I love hating out record was a, an homage to that era in my life so that's very like nirvana-esque um very Damn. grunge i was really into grunge uh as a kid like yeah. um my mom you know what's funny my mom loves metallica she loves speed metal she loves heavy metal she that's hated grunge cool. your mom she hated thought grunge? grunge yeah because like she she had me when she was like already in her early 30s and i guess like that's when you're like shift when you're like oh new music is dumb so yeah, when that people, a lot was, of people didn't like grunge because they thought it ended the metal phase. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she was like, yeah, that music's dumb. And all those uh, people are, are bad. You know, <laughs> those <laughs> people are bad. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. They're, um, so because of that, like I'd listen to it in private. And you know what? I think I'm a I'm a very private artist, if that makes any sense, where it's mm -hmm. like um, a lot of people will listen to my music and kind of be like, I'm a guilty pleasure to some people. And like they've told me that before, like they like music, that? but I can't like you know blast it in my car and show people that I'm listening to your like stuff because sometimes it's a little bit wow. too. <laughs> I think I well, think like, you know I like a lot of it is like that... kind of com comedic, you know. Yeah. So like no, maybe some like people don't know when to start Frank taking it. He's gonna seriously. combine his yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, I didn't yeah, mean to and either. I like the fact that Frank is basically Jerk. when he makes his music is combining all of his sides together, and part of his side True. is like. His, his playful, silly side, along with his sincere side, along with his darker side. And that's all in every one of his songs, almost. And it's how you choose to hear which part of Frank. You know what I mean? So yeah. if, some, yeah. if, somebody is, if somebody associates Frank more with comedy, that's what they're going to hear mostly when they listen to it. But the fact True. is that everything is in those songs. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Everything that's that's Frank is in those songs you know when you funny? listen to it. The and it touches one, me deeply, by the way. You know, touches the number me one deeply. comment... Oh, thank you very much. I love touching yeah. you deeply. The number oh. one comment I would get oh, that boom, boom, pissed me the fuck it. off yeah. was um, people would be like, this is really good for joke music. When are you going to make serious music? And I was like, bro, this is serious music. Yeah. Even though it's if it's funny, if it, you feel that way, yeah. this is serious music. That and was low-key what I was kind of getting at. If you felt like people had pigeonholed you. Yeah. Well, the thing is, no one like me has ever existed, and I like coming up with that. that That's like, true. Hey, you, see, you feel this feeling that I'm giving you? Isn't it crazy no one's ever given this to you? So that's like the thing I want to kind of give off is that there will never be another Frank Jaffe ever, if that makes any sense. So like, I remember I, I saw a comment on TikTok because my song Simpson Wave is blowing the fuck up there. And they were like, did you know this guy, the song is just a joke song? I don't like it anymore because it's a joke song. And I was like, what? What the okay. fuck? Okay. Oops. 
Oh my god, man. Yeah, but like, I think it's weird because like, I'm really into the subconscious of humor right now. I've been reading a lot of Sigmund Freud shit because I've been like really understanding like, why do we make jokes? Not the jokes that make us laugh, but the jokes we tell others. And yeah. I realized the jokes we tell others is a very subconscious kind of thing. So like, when I was younger and I was making like edgy jokes, I made those because I was hurting. I was a college yeah. dropout. I was like uh, $40,000 in debt. I was living really? with my parents. It was a really rocky situation. My mom had cancer. I was fucking smoking weed every day, feeling very useless. I had to pay off my loans. I was like, I'm going to make fucking uh, stupid content on YouTube and see what happens. And then I slowly started like building my life up, you know? And like yeah. now here I am, I guess, 30 years old, um, balling as fuck. <laughs> balling as fuck. You heard it on hot takes. Frank, yeah, do you uh, do you curate your social me your social media or do you just let it kind of run wild? You know what I I okay here's something I've talked to people that are like super, you know I've I've I I know a lot of influential people I know a lot of people that have numbers. It's yeah. to me it's all been a video game. Social it's media is just a video, video game, game. <clears throat> and um, yeah, the content is just uh, kind of like that. Moves. In general. Yeah. So like when I curate social media is literally me just being a silly goose and being seeing what sticks goose. and what doesn't stick. Yeah. Man. Do you oh, mm. do you have any uh, terms muted on Twitter that you want to share with us? Um just people. Just people. Gotcha. <laughs> we don't have to go there. <laughs> but no, I like seeing everything. I think um if you censor like I, I know I, it sounds hypocritical. I'm like just people, but um, LMA. if you censor stuff, you won't be able to see um what reality really looks like. You'll create an what, echo chamber. Wanna, that's one of my biggest pet peeves is when someone tells me delete that or like uh get rid of this or don't say that because like yeah, as an artist, I want to be able to express myself to the fullest ability because if I keep it inside, it's gonna like. I feel like emotions are very fluid and like like water, like air. And if you keep it inside, it's going to turn into a rock. And then that rock's yeah. just going to be stuck in you. Yeah. So like, I don't like that idea of being stuck. Yeah. I agree, man. I, I don't think, I mean, obviously, if you feel moved enough to, to take something down that you posted, go ahead. But but I kind of, I'm kind of anti-censorship too, man. I, I don't really like echo chambers. If you said it, you meant it at the time, just fucking leave that shit up. It happened. Yeah. What are you going to do? There were Rewrite history? Things. Oh, I never said that. Looking ass. Yeah. Like in my past, I was kind of edgy and I did say things that were insensitive and I didn't know at the time. Mm -hmm. And there was like moments where I, I, people like, you know, they let me know it hurt them. And I, yeah. I would, I wouldn't be like, oh, well, you're a pussy, whatever. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, oh, I'm very sorry that I affected you in that way. I didn't know that is how it would make you feel. I will know in the future not to be insensitive like that. And a lot yeah. of it was like, you know, like we were talking about like punching down. A lot of people felt like that in my early videos and stuff. So as I aged, my videos started getting, I guess, more mature and stuff. And even my content started getting more mature. Like right now, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like a fraud because I legitimately haven't uploaded music in forever. Like, this year I only uploaded like seven songs, but I worked on so many other songs that produced beats for others, mixed and mastered, um, given like sax solos oh, wow. and like um, just random stems to it, my friends. So I think in total I've probably done like 30, 35 release things, and like on, only seven of them are like Frank Jeff C originals. But mm -hmm. out of those seven Frank Jeff C originals, they're like, they're what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create background music. There was a point in my life where I was like, I want to make music that just plays in the background of shit happening. Like, I think I'm very camp. Like, I'm very much like, look at me, blah, blah, blah. But then I started evolving into thinking about, like, uh, like Slice of Life or, like, you know, Liminal Spaces okay. where it's like, oh, you're in a yeah. hallway. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're, so you're, you're capturing, like, an emotion. They're, 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 like a... they're, they're, you are more vaporwave than, than you realize. Yeah. You're, you're capturing, like, a space you, you or a feeling that. that's... Um, what's the word when it goes away quickly? It's only there for just a moment. Ephemeral. Oh, ephemeral. Thank you. Yeah. 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 All right. I, I'll be right back. As I mentioned, I am feeling a little sick. So just guys, keep the conversation. Give me three minutes. Okay. Uh, feel better, buddy. Yeah. No problem. Can I pick your brain about some of your favorite JRPGs? <laughs> yes. Okay. Can I tell you the one that inspired me to legitimately make music? And it is yes. so harmonic. I really want to know. As a child. I was like, what the fuck? This is the best music I've ever heard. So because of it, like I listen to pop music and be like, eh, it's mid. Right. Chrono Trigger is That's my favorite right, game of baby. all time. So what are your favorite pieces from Chrono Trigger? You know what it is? Time. 
I am obsessed with time. I think one of the things that sets me apart as like a just an individual is I could just guess any era. And like, I could be like, you see this movie? It came out in 1997. And the, the, the number one song of that year was this and that, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to give like the exact one. I think 97 was like when Euro House was like really good. So like, I'm right. really, really into Euro dance right now. Um, but I love I love archiving eras as a time. Like right now, we because we're in the present, we don't see the time capsule of what is this era. But like, because of like, like, how can I say this? You know how like we're like Plastic Love. You know how Plastic yeah. Love is blowing the fuck up right now? Oh, yeah. Boy, Back in the it? day, like, no, yeah, nobody would have cared. Like, in America, they would have been like, okay, just in a regular mm -hmm. song. I think the gems float their way up to the top as time goes on, and we only hear the best of the best from that era. You're like, nobody's listening right. to, like, the random B sides of 1970s folk rock. We're listening to the best of the best that survived through time. So, when you create something timeless, it's something that goes on forever, you know, that feeling. So, like, I love listening to older music that people still play today. Like, that's why like Christmas is a very emotional time for me because just all these memories of like the music and right. those songs are like almost, you know, 70, 80 years old, but we're still listening to them to this day. Well stated, man. Um, Thanks. Lux wanted to know if anybody has asked you about your favorite track to play when you're DJing. <sighs> Alice DJ better off alone. I have a very specific memory of being like, I don't nice. know, six and just going hard because that song like made me want to move but it also made me sad that's one of the things yeah. that i love about music is it makes you happy and sad at the a same lot time. of trance and like, is really sad yeah it has that complex feeling like mm -hmm. the it may it's just the, the the sound they're like you know minor keys or the melodies go down and dip down and then dip yep. back up but like it was funny i remember um i dj'd the groove continental show it was like this um it was like this LA show for I don't know what it was. It was like a weird like future funk signing party. <laughs> yeah, I remember <laughs> hearing like, about that. Yeah, it was really nice. Um, cause like LA is my hometown, so whenever I play LA, like I feel like people come out and they just have a good time with me. Um, the 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 manager guy was like, Frank, you got three minutes left. Play your last song. And I was like, Fuck. All right. I don't know what to play. Looked around and I was like, Hmm, I'm gonna play my favorite song of all time. So I said, Hey everyone, um, it's me, Frank. This is the last song of the night. Um, just pretend. No, what did I say? I said, it's a future funk show. Just pretend I sped this up, put a kick on it, and called it something in Japanese, and then played better yeah. off alone. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and honestly, everyone went crazy. Honestly, I'd, I'd be. That's the perfect way to end the night, man. Yeah, when right, and everyone sang it like that's the thing because I know yeah. it's a generational song. Everyone mm -hmm. within my age range just knows the melody because as soon as it started yeah. playing, they went. That and like "Show Me Love," I feel like are like the best like gems from that era. Robin yeah, dude, S. you were at the party when I was just doing '90s house. Yes, I yes, I was that. on that that was like, crazy like, din and deck that you have. That was battery yeah, I love powered. That battery powered wireless wi-fi with platters that are like though. this big <laughs> <laughs> you can't really scratch on it though it's a good like i would say if you're like a traveling dj who doesn't yeah. want to use any other gear like it's very easy to plug into i use that for like my very simple bar gigs if they hit me up and they don't have things that was a wild night man honestly for for reference to anybody who doesn't know what we're talking about frank came and played a private kickback for my collective rosewood which frank is is in and uh lux was visiting from out of town it was like the second time we had we had had a vacation together before we you know moved to be with each other and uh frank brought this denon dj deck that's battery powered you put all the music in it you don't even need like a thumb drive i don't think the music's just in it and mm. frank was like yeah i'll come play but i'm just gonna put only if i can play like 90s euro beat and house <laughs> yeah. music people were like sure and lux yeah. just like had the most like exciting time just like the night of her life and this fool if if you don't if you've never seen frank dj his skill is like it's stupid like how skilled this Thank man you. is he you know like is. i was watching you and you were just doing this like silly honestly silly little dance the whole time just having a great time and after every chorus you would fucking like work the intro in the little interlude after the chorus you would fucking work the intro of the next song it was super systematic but it was like fucking perfect you, you didn't make a single mistake all night or if you did i surely didn't notice 
<laughs> Bless your heart and soul, young Shiro. Yeah, I was just like, that's that's what I want to be like. I want to be like that. Do you remember the first time we met? Um, buddy, I think that was the first time we met. Or or nope. no? I have my memory's have really picture. bad. I have images of the first time we met. Really? I met really? you at the George Clanton show in um. LA. Oh wait, Ooh. I do remember that. I remember George stood behind me and put his hands around my belly like I was yeah, pregnant and, or something and you were like you you didn't have like you were enjoying like, it at all. That's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. You were like who is this fool? Yeah, no, straight up. I had no idea who you were cuz I was trying to take a picture with, with George Clanton cuz like um I do I, know, I have this. a whole story with George, but I don't want to talk about it publicly. So okay. you were know, like, there. And then like you were you were just in the you were just in the photo with us and I was like who who who, who is, is this guy? fool? <laughs> who's, who's this person? Like, I I've been around you. for a long <laughs> time, but I just don't make music. So <laughs> yeah, so that's where I first met you. I was like, I yeah, there's this guy. That. I tried to take a picture of George Clady. He just hopped in there and we did whole three. Times. <laughs> and I, I I feel bad if I jumped in during your picture, man. I, I no, it's only totally funny. That. Like I thought it was funny because like um uh, only in the vaporwave scene does something like that happen. Like right. I remember one yeah, time I was like, you took a gig. And this yeah. guy was like, yeah, I'm this guy. I was like, cool. You should follow me. Okay, LMAO. cool. No, That's like, nice, do it nice right to meet now. you too. <laughs> like, Hello. Okay, I did it. Don't hurt me. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know about you, man, but I have like a really hard time knowing like when is the right time to jump in and talk to this artist that I respect a lot and what the fuck do I say to them? Like, hey, I love your no. art. Like, you know, like I just the never know is, what the we're fuck all to people. do. Yeah. yeah. You just talk to them like people, yeah. That's what I, you know, it was hard for me to do that for a long time. I guess time. that's an remember, imposter syndrome thing. You're like, do I deserve to talk to this person? I you think know, everybody you know. has a little bit of imposter syndrome, right? Like, that's kind of everybody, I, yeah? The only time yeah. I've ever been like, my spaghetti fell out of my pockets and I don't know what I'm doing my was when I met Ego Raptor. Uh, yeah. Are you familiar with the game Grumps at all? I know yeah, who they are. Yeah, of course. Yeah, they're super yeah, so famous. I, w I was super obsessed with like the Game Grumps back in the day. So this is already like yeah. a decade ago. Like I used to watch them all the time. I used to think they were really funny. I wanted to be like them. So yeah. then one day I meet Aaron Hansen just um, out in like little Tokyo. And I was okay. like, hey, 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 a Aaron. Uh, I, I, I like your videos. Okay, bye. <laughs> it was like Please. the only time I've ever just like. But, yeah, Can I have your I, autograph? Like, I tweeted. I tweeted so hard, and then I was like, "Fuck! I should have took a picture." But then I, I later met met him again at like a like a super mega show, and like he was just like really nice, nice. and like yeah. I was still like just fit, like, "Hey, I like your I like your videos." Right, you touching oh, my well, hair. Dude, you... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you really need that red, party. white, and blue headband, buddy. Yeah. yeah, I love the the headband. Headbands keep the sweat from getting into my eyes. Because if I get sweat in my eyes, that's what I learned at shows. I always wear a headband. Because if I get sweat yeah. in my eyes, my eyes are closed. Good fucking the eyes, point. The eyes are the most important thing with getting people to just pay attention to you. I realize. I yeah. I don't know if it's like a weird psychic thing, but like I'll look at someone in the eyes and be like, "You having a good time? I'm having a good time. You're not having a good time." I, I've okay. I I've not performed as many times as you, but I've started making eye contact with random people in the crowd. Like yeah. while I'm while I'm performing and just being like I'm a gonna get that smile. person hyped. Yeah, it's mirror neurons. People, if you smile at someone, they'll smile back. You know, that is true. if you're not like he he creepy, just like <laughs> I know, right? They're like yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. We mirror each other. That's how we learn is by mirroring each other. Yeah, Frank, what oh. are some other YouTubers that Actually, you can put us on? That's a fascinating observation. Oh, what was that? I said, what are some other YouTubers that you can put us on? Um. I've been listening. I've been watching a lot of queer women just talk about things they're obsessed with. <laughs> That's like we one can... of my my bigger things is I like watching sapphic women just talk about stuff that they love, and I'm like, go on, sis. That you sounds like go. some scaly shit. Yeah, but like I'm really into video essays just about random shit. I don't really, you know, what's funny. I don't watch a you lot like of nonfiction. YouTubers. Yeah, I love uh, fantasy. I love. Um... You know what I've been watching? I've been watching a lot of like a uh, soft life kind of stuff where it's like people just walking around Japan with a GoPro on their head. And like I put that on and I, I like listen to audiobooks on self help or like some spirituality. Soft art. life. Very interesting. Yeah. I like that genre. It's like it's visual ASMR. Um, soft life. It's just, is yeah, that a genre or stuff. is that like the name of the channel? No, that's a genre. Because I'm really into video genres. Soft Damn, life is one. Awesome. I, 
I was really into remember videos. I think I showed you guys at the party. I was like, have you ever heard of remember videos? And they're just videos where people make uh, mashups of a year where they have the music, the films, the TV shows, the video games. Dude, all I just year forgot. I, I, you unlocked a memory yeah. for me. I fucking forgot. About, I remember asking you too. I was like, what the shit is this? This is so fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Can you link me to that after this? Because I remember really yeah. wanting to get into that. Yeah. You just type in remember the year and literally then just, you'll see like I literally all just, the thumbnails are usually a black thumbnail with the year and once you find it click it and you fall down a rabbit hole i, I remember love talking to frank because he mentions like so many things that i like jot down like i gotta look this up frank will literally be like have you ever there. this and it's like there. the fucking most amazing thing you've ever <laughs> i just really i really need... have you ever picked I... mushrooms in a cemetery and made soup from it because i did and this I is why you mushrooms. should <laughs> and i remember my first ever mushroom trip it involves getting kidnapped by mormons you told me about this one i remember yeah. this yeah, so I remember basically, this I can't go into detail, but they yeah, they it's a whole thing. It requires me. another episode to even get into. I that. need to tell you this. They tried to get in contact with me recently, and I was just like, No, no they did not. Yeet. Yeah, Unreal. I just real fucking because I remember you told me this story one time in a video chat. And that was crazy, yeah. but another time, or just talk to Frank one day. Yeah, I, um, I gotta, yeah, I, I gotta, I gotta speak to you. <laughs> See, even Fiber every... does. Me and Fiber went to Disneyland. Oh, that shit went so hard. You and Fiber went to Disneyland. Yeah, I told Fiverr like a lot of stuff. Oh, Fiverr, wow. you're cool. I can't wait to hang out with you next uh, in like two weeks. Actually, I need to message you about that. I'm gonna get my flight and stuff so we can like make sure it's all like arranged perfectly. But I'm playing Magfest uh, next week, and I'm gonna make I like saw a. That. I saw well, that. I saw that. Like, very, very cool. A full, very cool a full video game set. I want to make like a bunch of remixes. I don't know if I should bring my sax or not because I've never flown with my sax, and I'm like nervous oh. about doing new things. Yeah, that seems like a real hassle, but it mm -hmm. could be worth it. It could be. As soon as I bring up my sax, you know what people do? Flip the fuck out. What do they do? What do they do? They take out their phone and start filming me. Damn. And that's all I want. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta I bring it in, sure buddy. I'm really good. You know what I mean? Like, I can't fuck up. And sometimes when I do fuck up, I'm like, it's jazz. It's blah, 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 blah. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's it. I love your, I love your, you just like your succinct as description of jazz. It's blah, 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 blah. It is. That's all it is. Jazz is just yeah. having fun. Having fun and hang out with your your buds, doing weird shit. Are you gonna spook the video game tracks shit. up and throw a kick over it, and give it yes, a Japanese you, title? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put a, a Jersey house. Dude, that and then and just turn it into like a like a fucking footwork track. <laughs> yeah, I love yeah, it's word. doing weird shit with your buds. Like use the same repetitive tight. sample over and over of like Super Mario or something. Yeah, man. You know what? You know what? That would go I'm hard. Cause Super so Mario. So happy we have Frank on today on the day that I'm I'm feeling extremely like really bad and under the weather. And I'm so happy we have Frank here today to like bring the energy alive. Seeing. Thank you so much. Love you, buddy. I love you too. I love both of y'all. I know we talked earlier the about feeling how like, is I felt, definitely like, mutual. Kind of strange, but yeah. like. I, that's all it's about is like love and i think yeah. for a lot of people that's scary um it's, yeah it's scary to be vulnerable like i remember oh. for the longest time it was hard for me to tell my friends i love them because i was so afraid of rejection i uh, am of, just like, yeah i get very afraid that when i do that i uh i get too overwhelming yeah or yeah like even like coming off the wrong way or just frightening i get drunk and message yeah, you, you, you get them worried that like time. you know you you know i i uh I'm usually you know, pretty together and straightforward and you know, analytical. Mm -hmm. And then when I do the feeling thing, it's hard, you know? Yeah. Because I worry I, worry I do not it logical. Oh, feelings God, tell me about it. Bugs the fuck feelings, out of me. Yeah, feelings are absurd. That's and you can't they're control they're not, them either. It's not even that they're not logical. They're not cerebral. Do you know what I mean? And, like, yeah. I'm much better with the world of the cerebral than I am with, like, you know, the other stuff is this your body so, I, I recently saw a tiktok that fucked with my head for a while it was like about it. you know those feelings that you get when your body's like i'm too tired or i don't want to do this you know it's your body literally trying to keep itself safe and comfortable but sometimes you shouldn't <laughs> listen like it was it was like there is a disconnect between your actual body and like your head or like your right like it's it's like what's what's real is the spirit yeah. real is your physical form real which one is actually in control and like when i started thinking about that like the physicality because sometimes i'm like i'm tired but i need to push forward or like yeah when you're doing something and you're like i need to quit and, and take a break i'm like no if you keep pushing mm -hmm. forward something may break through and like that duality of mind and 
uh no like spirit and body started fucking with my head recently and i was like who's yeah. it controlled me <laughs> well there's there's a word and it's for like when you when your emotions provoke a physical reaction it's like psycho somatic i think right okay psycho when when you feel a certain way so you get like a gut response it translates into an actual physical response which then fuels even further the psychological response and it's just like we really are just a bunch of neurons and, and meat aren't we but have you ever know. been in a situation where you're like i need to get out of here there is no yes. logical reason for me to be here yeah. i need to get out have you heard of that yeah. book yeah. the gift of fear mm -mm. it's talked about no, on reddit on. all Tell the time that. Apparently, there's yeah. this book. It's called The Gift of Fear. And it talks yeah. about how we have these, like, evolved, like, evolutionary skills and abilities to tell when something ain't quite right and there's danger afoot. Yeah. And your brain will override it and go, no, oh, everything's okay. That doesn't make any sense. You're good. But if you feel a fucking gut feeling like, man, I need to get out of here, it's best to listen to it because it's an evolved yeah. evolutionary, like, response that that your brain just can't pick up on as quickly as your your like body can or whatever yeah that's, that's some so shit interesting that you would though. probably think, be really interested in yeah i love the idea because i my big like thing that i really want to control is my emotions because sometimes i let my emotions right. get the best of me i lash out i say things um i I, you know, I, I, it's almost like a destructive outburst and I want to learn to just be able to swallow my pride and pull it, you know, like not hurt anyone. Like we're talking about like healing and like, that's not hurting anyone. Yeah, like I think, um, yeah, stoic takes. Cause I think my, my dad's extremely Stop stoic. Right this, that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, a lot of men are and, and for better or for worse, a lot of us would really do well to be more in touch with our emotions. Yeah. It is, you know. it is good to like actually feel them, but I also feel like to be able to master them and control them would help me have a more efficient life. So I'd be able good to point. be more creative or like just like have discipline to actually sit down and be like, I am going to finish music because this is my job. Because yeah. it's kind of like all over the place right now. Like sometimes I'm like, I need to go when my heart is in it. But then I realized like if I actually just sat down and just worked it, I could like yeah. accomplish it. Oh, I wanted oh, to bring dude. up my dad again because I was talking to him this morning. And um, I was over at my family's house, um, and I, I said something like, I've been reading a lot of Sigmund Freud recently. He's like, isn't that the guy that got ate by tigers? I'm like, that's Siegfried and Roy. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, man. Banger tweet. How do you come up with so many banger tweets, dude? Are you just always thinking? And then you're like, you oh, know what it's it perfect. Is? I have an idea, and I'll, I'll use speech to text. So I just go on Twitter, use speech to text, and then upload it, and then don't think about it. I think that's part. I mean, obviously, you're a very skilled DJ musician, but like your your personality is, I think, an extremely important component of Frank Javsi. Yeah, and <laughs> just sure. the fucking I mean, like, oh my God. It's, like it's I mean, they're they're really, and I don't mean this in a mean way. They're it's just like so said, damn like, stupid I tried to sometimes. Be the only me that ever like in a good here, way. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's all I we know. can. I can't be. get enough. At the end of the that's day, true. we are all the only us that we has ever been here but like frank is uh is, is expanding that a lot you know what's funny one of the compliments i always get is um like in you remember in high school we signed each other's yearbooks and stuff yeah all my high school yearbook ever said was don't change and i was like what you want me to stay like young and juvenile and dumb forever but then i realized as i got older i was like oh what they're saying is always be yourself and like true i remember i was talking to a friend and um he was telling me like the thing he liked most about me is that he, he's like to me you are the most youest you I've ever met. And I was like what? <laughs> to be told you're the youest you I've you ever met. You do seem like you're very in touch with yourself and in tune with yourself, and I'm I'm happy for you, but I'm also kind of jealous. Like uh, <laughs> what, what we were talking about earlier, <laughs> like before I got in the chat, I was like I'm these things, but I think they're cringe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was really funny. <laughs> So I have a question for you since it's it's Isaac's stupid question time. Um, nice. Let's on a serious note, what are some things that you think are problematic about just music in general right now that you would change if you had control over them? The way um, artists are paid, um, I think uh, a lot of people don't realize their self-worth in the scene or totally what their agree. music could be worth. Um, one of my big uh, like hot takes is like, I always see people be like, Spotify doesn't pay artists. I'm like, they do 
you just have to get the streams up if that yeah. makes any sense like it's very small but i think spotify should raise their price i was talking to um a groovy kaiju about this and he was mm -hmm. like yeah if you adjust for inflation um when spotify first launched it's the same price but it should be at least like 15 or 16 dollars and if they up the price they would make uh more streams per dollar and more artists would get paid and i think people should realize that uh music does have a value it's yes it's it does both healing is cathartic and it also has a value in society and people should pay for it um I, absolutely but, like that's the biggest you know with i love hating you i was telling you people love to talk about what they hate all i ever see on twitter is people complaining about it they complain about every little thing but like, like especially twitter like we we're talking about this like people are like twitter sucks i hate twitter where are they talking about it on twitter they're talking about how much they hate twitter on twitter it's like what are you doing like i get it people have complaints but like i, I don't want to be that type of person where all i do is talk about the negativity or like what i hey i i like talking about things i love like right now i'm really obsessed with water bears i just think they're cute so that's oh what my yeah those means. fucking things bears are very interesting yeah, yeah, they're little aliens. They're fuck with that. They're really, about they're really the weird. Witches. Yeah. Um, well, but yeah, you know, I think music should be paid more. Thoroughly agree, especially with the the cost of of. I mean, hey, people can afford to pay for it. I personally, and I don't mean to toot my own horn, man. I personally yeah. love supporting my friends' art. Um, yeah. I, I think that it's I think that it's a beautiful gift and and to like echo what you said I think it's very valu valuable and you can't expect it to continue to exist or even grow or get better without some sort of help. Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of people that don't really need help, but quite frankly, I think that you should help anytime you can. Yeah, like it's just giving With back because like okay, I'm in this like Santa Claus. I'm in the Santa Claus phase right now. Like, I realized that um, my art was just giving. That's all I was, was giving it to the people, and they were yep. receiving it from me. So I feel like to be an artist or just to be a human is to always give more than you receive and not think about anything in return. Like, just give to make yeah. people feel good. So I've been, like, low-key, like, <laughs> I've been just, like, subscribing to my friends, giving them donations, buying, like, little trinkets and just sending it to them. So it's, like, it's all about the, the feeling, you know, the feeling of saying, like, I am appreciated and I am mm -hmm. wanted in this person's life. So yeah. that, that's that's one of the if big the things art I'm has moved you, consider donating. Like, damn, mm. you know. Like, yeah. I remember when CDs cost about fifteen dollars in like the two thousands. So adjusted for inflation, that's probably like what twenty five dollars now. Like, consider buying your that's homies cool. tape. Like, subscribe to their Patreon. Send them fifteen dollars on PayPal if you liked what they made. Yeah, subscribe to my only Shout fans, Frank. Uh, only Franks. Subscribe to only Franks. Shout out to yeah. the supporters, man. Frank, you have seen quite a, um, quite a bit of popularity. You've been, you've been successful, you know, within the vaporwave and and without outside the vaporwave scene. Why do you feel like some people make it and some people don't? Um, straight up, it's how you make other people feel. That's my biggest thing about like we we're talking about art and it's like the how um, why some people get big, why some people don't. Um, I hate when people are like, it's all about luck. I don't think luck is a big thing. You make your own luck simply by creating it. Well there said. is this um, like wheel of fortune where it's like, is he going to get the, the big uh, the big oh, cat? Thank you, Frank. Yeah, no problem. Like who's going to be big or like, is this going to flop or whatever? But I think, to like also it's like extrovertedness. Like you, if you talk to everyone, people are just gonna know you, right? <laughs> you know I mean? If you, like one of the things though is like I think um, you're gonna have to balance yourself with not being too over sherry and not being under shared enough. Like that's why I tweet like every day because like I like talking to people. I like asking questions. Yeah. I like getting to know people. I like knowing what people Me are too, listening man. to. Yeah. I also like when people just come up to me and be like, hey, yo, um, this inspired me or like uh, you're like one of my favorite things right now is I've been going to raves and like all the kids running them. They're all like in their early 20s and they oh, yeah. all know me like all the people DJing and putting them together. I've seen my videos and like it's <laughs> nice. So Thank you. Father. Validating. That's how to show I got up and then... really chill was just by showing up to a bunch of different places and getting to know people. Yeah, you just talk. And so, like, that's how you become successful is just by meeting people. 
I don't like you could be introvert. I understand introvertedness. Like I, there are times I don't want to talk to anyone. There's times I just want to be alone. But actually, you know what? It's weird. When I want to be alone is mostly because I actually want someone to talk to. If that makes any sense. No, it does. That make is a lot really of sense. interesting. It makes a lot of sense, actually. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Because like you, you... when I'm feeling most sad is because I'm feeling unloved and. I'm like, I just want to feel loved. So I kind of like go out into uh, social media spaces. I'm like, here's a silly joke. Uh, does anyone want to talk to me? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I can't be alone for too long. But the, the paradox of that is I make my best work when I'm alone and just focused on making something. There is a lot of difficulty uh, with networking when you're introverted. <laughs> um, yeah. But but it when it's when it's genuine connection... As opposed to just rubbing shoulders, I mean, it's it's a very natural, beautiful, organic thing. It's just hard to find those moments. Yeah, As a card-carrying like, introvert, it's hard to find those moments. Like, I'm really into anthropology right now, like just the study of humans and how we interact and stuff like that. And I think uh, Vaporwave is an interesting case of uh, subculture anthropology. Because remember, I was talking about, like, you ever realize all the Vaporwave people have, like, a similar vibe? <laughs> and because of that, they're, gr they're they're attracting each other. They're pulling each other close to be like, you're into this too? Then so am I. Let's, let's, let's collab, let's communicate, let's create together and see what comes of it. Yeah. This fool yesterday, yeah. he goes, you ever notice a lot of Vaporwave people kind of look alike? Like, you and me kind of <laughs> look alike, don't you think? I was like, damn, I guess we kind of do. <laughs> You know and what it, it is? We all have bad eyesight. What's up with that? Right, right. <laughs> and and I, in a moment yeah, of seriousness, I, I was like, it seems a lot of people in the scene are, are neurodivergent. A lot of people suffer from anxiety, depression. Uh, and we all had, of them are queer, too. That's one of the things I like, too. That it, too. It feels like a very queer art movement as well. Very like, much so. <laughs> Yeah, like we all have our own. Um, it's like a it's like a rainbow. We all have our own mm -hmm. shade and color of this prism that is around this sound. Which to me, vaporwave is more of a feeling than the actual music. Because like right. the music, I, we were talking about this earlier. Like the music yeah. has a distinct sound, but it's the vibe it gives you. Like I remember, I forgot who made a tweet. I I saw a tweet that was like vaporwave is all about the vibe, and I was like, that's so true. That's all it is, is the vibe. It's like that meme where it's like someone who's like got a low IQ, and they're like vaporwave's all about the vibe, and then they have a bell curve with some yeah, stupid like, statement, and then like is this, the super the evolved the person on the other side is like vaporwave is all about the vibe. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's what it is. That's it's the one in the middle, middle is like capitalism has died. And whatever they say on the fucking Reddit page. <laughs> That's out to Reddit. I hate Reddit. I don't know why. It's like 4chan, but with a point system. And I've been saying this forever. <laughs> system. <laughs> oh, my yeah. gosh. I don't like That's point system. I like the idea of just, like, free uh, information. Although on 4chan, they hated me when I first showed up. They oh, my God. I can't even imagine. Oh, they absolutely fuck. destroyed me. But, you know, I had, like, a, I had a savior. So, like, one of the, oh. one of the secrets was uh, a mod for Moo was a huge fan of my work and they would really? let me know when like people because they were trying to start rumors about me like they were, were you to part of like, the broper wave thing shit. uh no i was never part of that or even fash wave i i know uh, some of they tried to use fash wave for, for like a couple of my instrumentals and i was just like i am not a part uh, of this i do not support yeah, right. any of this shit at all i hate fascism but i love fashion <laughs> hey yo <laughs> lmao that kind of fash wave is fun lmao yeah Quiz has a question for you, buddy. He says, is it important to discuss Vaporwave as a phenomenon and a scene? He goes on to say, a lot of artists seem to have no interest in that or believe there is nothing deeper going on with Vaporwave other than just surface level aesthetics and vibe. See, that's what people were complaining about when I first showed up. And I was like, this is what Vaporwave is. And everyone's like, how dare you put it in a box? How dare right. you say it's simple and stuff like that? And I think as an art movement, art movements are only as important as how, how big the discourse is. If True. people are oh, that's interesting. On, oh, wow. On so I like that. different sides of it, that's what makes it important. Every artist that's ever blown up in the past decade or so, it's because everyone either loves them or hates them. There's never been an artist where everyone's like, we all yeah, they're love just them. Die. If, if someone all loves them, then they they don't get big. If someone all hates them, they, they stay low. But if there is a juxtaposition, if there's a discourse around it, if it's getting people mm. talking, that's what makes something an important thing. Yeah, that is also maybe another... why the vaporwave concept has stayed around so long, because there's always discourse over what it is and what yeah. it should be. And what... Yeah, that, because... there you go. That's why it's here. People are like, I wonder how this keeps staying around. I'm like, I think you just nailed it. It's because people yeah. just keep talking about what it's supposed to be or what it is. 
Yeah. Right. Like I remember when they were like Vaporwave is dead in like 2015. Right. And yeah. they they're still talking about it about how it's dead. And I'm like, so people are still like, well, what is it? Here, <laughs> let it go. <laughs> supposed to be this it's supposed to be that and then it's, and it's a vibe that, it's that's a scene it's, it's a sound it's a you know whatever and that's why it's still here interesting yeah that's why it's important because people are always talking about it yep good point frank aside from like pink panther s and some of the other things that you've mentioned earlier what is your favorite music or how music. would you just like straight up anything that makes me move is uh i got you i'm into um i i can listen to down tempo stuff like Sometimes I get bored because, like, if I'll, I'll the only the only way I'll even listen to like ambient or I was gonna slow ask you if you like that is if yeah. I'm doing something else. So like, <laughs> yeah, vaporwave compilation music is good music to like read a book to, or like simply go right. on a walk. But even when I'm on a walk, good. I listen to dance music. It's, oh yeah, yeah, it's good okay. music to do other things too. I find. Do you like stuff that's like ridiculously fast, like 200 BPM stuff? I'm down. I mean, yeah. I used to do videos on that. Speed I remember I had stuff. a tutorial on Gabber. I had a tutorial nice. on, um, a not Acid House. The Acid House was the one I was trying to come back with. Um, Breakcore. The way Breakcore tutorial got me death threats. Like Breakcore. Oh, oh yeah, man. you don't want to fuck with Breakcore. Man, I Literally, yeah. on that Breakcore world. But, wow. Break I know Breakcore so is crazy. Good Breakcore is so good, but yeah. you got to be careful. <laughs> yeah, I, careful. That's when I learned, like, some certain genres, like, I don't know how to describe it. Like, you know, like, someone's like, I love harsh noise. It's like, why right <laughs> break core is just so melodramatic like it's like take take it's usually bad vibes let's be honest it's usually like anger yeah, okay, or so sadness can i tell you the death threat i got was this yes. guy yes, who was like frank jeff see your music is shit and horrible i fucking hate you and then they sent me a picture of them holding a rifle with like a mask over their face oh <laughs> no what is and horrible then this people? One, yeah this other one who was just kept calling me like homophobic slurs and shit and like they were like, they were like some, some, like, that, that's the part that like kind of irked me was like, I could tell they were like mentally unwell and like, you know, their teeth were that type of teeth. <laughs> so I was like, bruh. Yeah. I just don't interact when it comes to that, but I always take note. I take screenshots if anything, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Okay. Um, this is important to archive, but I will not interact. Yeah. I've learned inter like a lot of people like that. Like we were talking about hurt people, hurt people. They love Damn. interact because some people just love fighting. Low key, I love arguing. That's like one of my weird I love like arguing. Hot takes. Yeah, I love fighting someone just mentally. So but like, like we will have you to start shit just to see like how far it goes or I won't start shit with a random person on the internet. Sometimes when I, I get you. like a hurtful comment, I want to. When I was young, mm -hmm. I used to just do it. I used to just like comment back and then like some people would just send me my home address and I was like, bro, I already know where mm -hmm. I live. But like I already <laughs> know where I live. Shut the I fuck already up. know where I live. But like oh. it's like um I love barring with my friends. Then like one of the things is I have friends of all sorts of political beliefs. I try not to censor out people's minds. I like to listen to them even if I do not agree with them. I'll let them speak Me too. and then be like, all right, cool. I, I kinda don't like when people like kind of like over what's the what's the word? Like that's all they obsess about is their I, I ideas that it's like they kind of like it's kind of like a vicious cycle. Like especially okay. with like politics or like um, just anything like I think a lot of these people like going over these loops over and over again and it almost becomes like a like a sickness like mm. they just love it's, it's, it's like also, ruminating it's on something yeah like they, they just like jerking off this feeling and because of that like I don't like really dealing with that where it's like at the end of the day who cares <laughs> damn we're all just gonna be dust so like oh, yeah divide. pretty much just vibe yeah Midnight but, um, Drift yeah, has a question fun. for you. He wants to know if he actually has a question for all three. Uh, he says, "Do you have any songs that you have stuck on repeat that is nowhere near Vaporwave or its surrounding adjacent or sister genres?" Ooh, that's a banger. I love pop music. That's one of my uh, little like, like I saw someone ask a question about Imagine Dragons. They're like, "What's your favorite Imagine Dragons song?" Uh, Radioactive because it's their biggest song. But like, right. I love pop music because their melodies are like synthetic drugs. And like the human body, like I've, I've actually developed this in my music too. I've, I found the pop theory. There is a formula that people just enjoy. And it's very much like the same formula, like as the hero's journey. It's the same setup for a mm. joke. It's the same, like if you pay attention to art, it's the same thing everywhere where it's build up and surprise. Yup. Build up surprise variation and build up surprise variation, go home. So you can feel complete. I was actually talking, do you know World of Echo? Yeah. 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 Zach. Uh, Zach. Zach. No, Zach yeah. Doom trip. Well, yeah. 
Zach's the best. Zach is so get, cool. We gotta get him on at some point. Actually. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Zach gets it. That's one of the things I love. People that get it, yeah, and when they Zach get it, I'm like, it. hey, let's let's talk about getting it. So Zach we were talking about it. the chaos of life, and one of the things that I I referenced as life is so chaotic. You're un like sometimes it's uncontrollable. It just kind of happens to you. But with music, you get something that will always be the same over and over again. And when you listen to it, it'll never change, and it always makes you feel complete at the end. You know what yeah. I mean? Like oh, yeah. it's it's like a little loop of paradise, and that's one of the things I love about pop music. Is it's a formulated Ooh, wow. loop of paradise that I can yeah. just go into, like when I want to eat a Big Mac without getting fat. Right. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Uh, did you need to answer the question, Isaac? I mean, the oh, thing yeah, is that you we guys, listen to you guys a lot song. of music. And I mean, it's just, I consider I just go with what you're listening to right now. That's on repeat. I that's consider right. Lo-Fi House to be kind of vapor adjacent, but like yeah, the best I can do. I'm sorry, Midnight Drift. The best I can do is name drop this one song that I'm about to post. It's called Rap 2 by Young Acid. It's nice. like a Memphis rap-influenced lo-fi house song, and um, it's probably Vapor adjacent anyways, and I'm sorry, but uh, you should check out Rap 2 by Young Acid. Yeah. I mean, I think that we all listen to a lot of stuff that is in, in the Vaporwave world quite, quite frequently, and I would just go with something I'm listening to recently, I guess. Uh, a lot, which is a song by this artist Ethel Kane called "Family Tree." It's very like I saw Chelsea you post Wolfish. about that. Yeah, very Chelsea Wolfish, uh, but like really like dour or down, like like it's interesting. Oh. I, I recommend it. The whole the whole her, that whole album is really good, but the song "Family Tree" by Ethel Kane I've been listening to a lot lately, frequently, nice. over and over again. Yeah, um, but do you get my metaphor for like it never changes? It never. I love that metaphor. Are you kidding? Yeah, yeah. I, I am. I love that. I I, I, I think it's amazing. I, I'm gonna have to rewatch the episode just to remember all the fun things that you said that I. There I'll have been some very later. wise statements made tonight. I'm just like, damn. Um, we have ten minutes left, and Quiz really wants you to drop a hot take right now. We have nine minutes left. Um, well, the hot take that I was going to come in with was my, my lead thesis, but like, I, I, I'm happy that we just flowed with it. Cause we went from yeah. dark places to light places to like in between, but, um, Ooh, fire, 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 fire. Yeah. I was going to say, um, That's the hot in the vapor scene, we kind of are all bounded by this kind of unseen trauma. And, uh, we all just kind of are trying to build a utopia together. I find. Are, we're trying mm. to build a world together based around this kind of feeling. And um, that's why we draw each other, if that makes yeah. any sense. It does. I yeah. thoroughly agree. And I remember speaking with you very briefly during the AV test where I had mentioned that I had always thought that people have nostalgia because of how difficult adulthood is. Mm hmm or just how difficult late stage Western capitalism is. I don't know if we had better yeah. lives. Would we be as nostalgic as we are? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, um, my, my favorite thing is the present. I've been really into like meditation and just realizing uh, the present is a present. It's a gift. <laughs> mm -hmm. Boom. But, um, I do like, uh, no lie detected, like cause here's, here's a funny thing. Like I'm really into astrology. It's one of my weaknesses. I'm really into magical thought. Like I know for a fact, um, a lot of it is kind of like a psychosis. Like if you're like, if you believe enough, you'll get it. But I also believe that whatever you believe is true in your reality, but everyone else's beliefs affect each other's beliefs. So you have to be really careful about who you believe with, if that makes any sense. Who you are believe with. True. Yeah, like who you believe with. Like, do you do you surround yourself with people who believe in you? And that's one of my big ones. And it's kind of fucked up, but I had to cut out uh, people in my life that would just always be negative towards me. And um, yeah. it, it sucked because like I had a shit ton of friends I made music with, and yeah. there was just uh, moments where we couldn't. It was like it was a it was a a moment where I realized, I realized we can't work together because there's just an incompatibility with belief structures that resonate right. very deeply. And wow. I had to, I, in order to evolve, I had to be, I had to surround myself with people that believe in me. And yeah. so you I have to have people that want you to win. Yeah. That's like the big thing. And um, sometimes like, you know, we were talking about sparring, like people that I love yeah. arguing with. Yeah. Um, I realized that there was this kind of thing where it's like, they didn't want me to win. And I was like, well, fuck. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And, um, yeah, wow. that's, that's you like have to, when, when competition defines you too much, I guess. Yeah, you have to be honest and, and 
you like i want all my friends to win i want them all to get songs that blow the fuck up i want them all to be sustainable i want everyone in my life to uh, have a comfortable life i want them to create the art they want to create um i want all i want i want to do shows with them like i want to do shows with you guys i would love to just dance and play music jump around and be happy like oh, straight up, I, I yeah. my favorite there. times in the world is when i can that's my favorite time ever is when i can dance and play oh shows yeah and be happy when dancing something you're is doing my favorite people... thing ever like one of my things was like do i like man. djing do i like playing the music or do i just like watching people have fun and i realized right. i just like watching people have fun right like, that's up. literally why i structure terminally chills like half hour and we round robin the whole time that way there's time to do a little <laughs> djing and then we go back out and dance a little bit i right. don't like DJing the whole and, and then Fucking. and then like also i like shuffling it up so you never know who's gonna be on and everyone goes on a few times and like that's so everyone can come and dance and it's about the fun it's not about you yeah. know, performance it's about the fun so that's the life I, I want to have is um, people that believe that there is a positivity to life. Because I've actually met some people that think the world just gets worse, that everything's bad, the world is going to end. And like the more I hang out with them, the more that kind of manifests in just being around them. Like I had a friend who had major depression, like a major depressive episode, and they were highly successful. They, they got four or five times more streams than me. They were balling. But everything was just so negative. And I remember we did we went on a mushroom trip and then we were hiking. Boy, you like, on a mushroom the, trip with this person. Yeah. Oh no. This was during the <laughs> summer. Fucking mushroom and gatherer like, over here. There was a moment where he was just looking at like the uh, like a little lake and he just started crying. And I didn't know what to do, so I just hugged him. And I was like, no. it's okay. It's okay to cry. It's okay. And then I started crying too. <laughs> so like it's funny because like I, I like to like think about because I, I I try how can I say that? I feel like I have main character energy. So if you see me, like I'm always dressed really fucking wonky. Like I never want to dress like an NPC, like I just have a t-shirt in. So I'm like wearing like a crazy like uh, Peruvian poncho and then this this little guy's wearing like a, a like a witch hat and he's just wearing like straight like a, a black like a uh, cloak and I'm just crying in the middle of the forest. Like oh, JRPG man. characters. And then like a group of like bros pass by and they're like Fuck. Like, <laughs> this, I, I had an idea that they assumed we were like breaking up or something. Oh my that's god, too that's funny. too funny. That's I, like I some love the energy right there. Yeah, I love that then, too. Uh, afterwards, we went to a waterfall, and uh, I got, I got, I didn't get naked, but I was wearing like my underwear, and I went into the waterfall and let it hit me, and then I, I came back and we played with a dog. But like, I was trying to get the message across that it's okay to feel sad, but don't yeah, think that like, everything is like the world is over. Cause I think if you believe the world is actually getting better, your life gets better as well. It reflects in your You're character, right. it reflects You're in right. your your emotion and stuff like I, that. I, I, hate I, to use an, or I hate to use the word that's kind of overused, but you gotta manifest that energy, right? You gotta yeah. make it happen, Words that's power. how it works. The things you say- Feelings have power. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Energy that you put out there. God, I still feel sound kind of like hackney saying it, but it's true. Like what you put out there is going to structure the reality around you. Do you want to know my number one? I have to remember that all the time. Yeah. What's that? I go to McDonald's. I say, can I get a Big Mac? You know what they do? What do they do? They give me a Big Mac. I manifested that shit. Boom. Right there. <laughs> Nailed it. Tim and Eric head explosion <laughs> gif. Guys, I, I, I hate to be a buzzkill because I'm having so much fun, but we yeah, got three too. minutes left. I want you to spend this, these last few minutes, man, promoting anything you want to promote, shouting out anyone you want to shout out, just anything you want to say okay, before we um, call it Everyone, a um, I don't know, just love each other. Like, mm -hmm. um, love isn't selfish. Love isn't controlling. Love isn't... Um, like it's it's not like like stealing or taking or yeah it's it's just giving so honestly if yeah. you create just give give out to the world and um don't even think about anything like getting something back in return or like i did this and you owe me um right. frank fc google me i'm silly my <laughs> I've been um I, I i am gonna release something new um eventually i have like this uh well, I, that's the thing is, like, when I say something, I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but I do have a city pop record that I've just been sitting on with my sax. It has guitar, has all me playing and touching it, because I told you, like, I really like the idea of creating something with my own hands. Right. Like, um, like I think the, the next renaissance in Vaporwave is when, as producers, we all kind of evolve and we start making our own sounds. So, like, I've been playing along to New Jack Swing. I've been playing along to city pop. I'm playing along to like Eurodance. I'm combining all these genres to create something that's very me. 
So um, yeah. I actually I, I shared the, the shitty thing is I has a sample in it. I have a rhythm of the night sample in one of my like uh, oh dance nice. songs, and I, I want to release it. And a part of me wants to be punk rock and just be like, fuck it, I'm gonna release it with the the thing. But yeah. like I don't know, we'll see what happens. Mm, we'll see what happens. Stay tuned. I kids. vote you release it. Anything else you want to say before we uh, round everything up? Um yeah. Um look <laughs> at my socks. They're Versace socks. Bruh, Versace wow. socks. You saw it yeah. on hot takes. Fucking sweet. Frank Jab C, everybody. Chris, you're playing a yeah. show here pretty soon. Uh, oh, yeah, I love fire for it. It looks cool. I love dark sound. Yeah, it's oh, like a yeah. dark show, right? There's a new party that I'm uh, doing with the Riot Nerd promoters here in Philadelphia at the 700 Club in Northern Liberties. It's going to be the party is called Eclipse, and we will be playing. Dark synth and synth wave and vapor wave and witch house music. So that goes hard. This is gonna, yeah, that is gonna it's go hard. January twenty seventh, Friday on a Friday in Ooh. Philadelphia. Because I'm gonna be on the East Coast. Around the oh, time. wait, when are you gonna be on the East Coast, friend? Well, I'm gonna be there the for Magfest. Oh uh, yeah. A part of me wants to go visit some friends, where it's like, hey, can I crash on your couch for like a week and just see what that's like? You know you what can, I mean? You right. Can definitely crash here if you're around, buddy. You know you're always yeah. jealous. But then I'll, it'll be like two weeks, so I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, right, two weeks? Uh, well, uh, yeah. All right. We can stay here for a little bit. Qu <laughs> Quiz is here too, by the way. And uh, right. Whoa. Yeah, but yeah, you do, missed quiz. You're around. Please hit me up. Mm, you know, I'd love to see you. I always love to see you, buddy. In person. Always love hanging out with you, IRL. Me too. That shit goes hard. I'm happy that like we, we, we go just so met. hard. Yeah, man. When did we meet? I honestly we met at Electronicon. We met Electronicon. I think the first time I remember, but you interviewed me when I was like a little bit crazy manic. But like you actually yeah. like I remember actually at Electronicon. And maybe you'll correct this joke for me, but I was sitting on, it was Electronic on 2, and it was backstage, and I was sitting on a couch with, with Telepath, and we were chatting, yeah. and we and you came over, and we were talking, to, I was talking to Telepath about the nature of time, and yeah. you guys were like, what are you guys talking about? Like, we are talking about time, and you're like, you had this joke that's like, I got this joke, you know what happens when you look into the, uh, the time spiral? And we're like, what? He's like, you waste a lot of time. <laughs> So like that was like the first actual exchange. Top five Frank Jepsey moments. <laughs> and it, 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 we're very amused. Telbath was very amused by that joke too. He was very, <laughs> very amused by it. Yeah. I love mm. jokes. Jokes go hard. I love surprising people. Jokes are hard. Yeah. Chris, you what else you got coming up? Scaring people. But that's the future. I don't want to talk people. too much about that. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Oh, and the other thing I have to promote is obviously the patch notes deluxe edition. Golden Hour is out, and I've got yeah, a buddy. fancy little remix of the song Breathe on it. Go listen to it, because it's very good. So and those remixes go hard Be careful shit. remix coming out soon, and I don't know, at some point, maybe I'll get this album finished. It's like the fourth time I've rewritten it. Sorry, Pacific Plaza, <laughs> but I'll be done soon. <laughs> we'll you're see. participating in that same Coast to Coast Collective live stream that's coming up, aren't oh, you? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. You're, you're doing that too, right? I'm doing a, a wave DJ set. Wave music, ah, 20 great. minutes. You, you will talk about that, sir. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I sent it to Luxury Noise because I don't know how to do visuals. So uh, uh -huh. he's going to be working on that. We don't have an exact hard date for that live stream yet, but it's probably going to be like January. Um, you know, promoting Patch Notes album and all kinds of good stuff. Um, and then he's you're going to be participating Patch in that too. So the Hot Takes Boys will be back I again. I got to do that set still. Together again. Yes, that's, sir. That's all I got, man. I don't have much else going on. Um, we are on. most likely in the next two weeks going to have a mega episode a la the retrospective that we had we'll figure uh, out what we're last do. year. I don't know what we'll do for that yet. No but, idea what I'm going to do, but listen, don't stress. I'll handle it. Um, obviously, oh, you're wonderful. invited, Frank, <laughs> and we'll reach out to some of the other guests to see if they want to be a part of our mega episode. So y'all send us your good vibes, and thank you for tuning in tonight, and thank you for thank you. having the questions uh, I'm going to drop that donation link again. Thank you for everyone that donated. Chase, big shout out. Uh, Fiber, Frank, again, thank you for your generosity. Yes. Um, and, you. of course, I always got to shout out our top donors. Be careful, Leo, uh, oh, Groovy yes. Kaiju, and Luxury Noise, uh, along with uh, Chase They're as well. And then I, I think I messaged people. you. Uh, Darian Shields came through with a giant donation out of nowhere. Just, just yeah, because he wanted to. Yeah, I saw to. that. That's so shout sweet. out. Such an and somebody wonderful... else. Oh, 
One very last question and, uh, before. Didn't Tupperwave so do something too? Tupperwave sent us money just like out of nowhere. Wow. Guys, go buy Tupperwave's go, album. Go, go listen to Darian albums. Shields. Go buy Clearly Darian their Shields albums. People. Go buy Be Careful's albums. Go buy Fiverr's albums. Go buy Frank. Go buy everybody's yeah. albums, please. And then be here in two weeks, 9 p.m. Eastern. And, and Well, actually, we might start it a little early. Um, One last question, Frank. Do you prefer Slow Dive or My Bloody Valentine? I don't listen to uh, vacuums. You heard it on Hot Takes. All right, guys. Thank you All again, right. Frank. We're going to run a special Thank Pacific you. Plaza ad. And everybody, have a lovely night. Bye. If you're dashing through the snow wondering what the dickens to give someone this Christmas, give them a vaporwave tape. Dun, dun, dun.